right, welcome aboard, sports fans. It is that time again. It is a lovely Tuesday afternoon, and it is PTL, Prototype Toronto League, Season 12 Grand Finals time. It is finals time. Oh, we can't wait. We are your hosts. I'm Timbo Slice. I'm Devin Monkhouse, Grand Master of the PTL, with uh, sharing that title with Aaron P., who we have on stream here today. Yeah, but you're the big boss. Uh, yeah, I'm the... You're the big boss. I hold the money and I pay for swag. <laughs> and I oh, do. does he make it rain? Actually, I no. try. From this, we're we're definitely going to ban the term "making it rain" on this on this stream for uh, for the for the remainder of the the evening. I mean, we're going to get them over here for their interviews in a minute after they get set up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, did um, we're also going to go through tonight uh, what the the two of these players' seasons look like? Try and paint a picture for everybody. Uh, who's interested in joining up with the PTL or maybe existing players that you really don't actually have to, you know, go undefeated like at a system open or something like that. Um, in fact, if you look back on, on both these players' seasons, it was, uh, it was a good run for both of them, but actually they, they were not on the top of the Swiss, so we'll get there in a minute. Aaron Poppenhausen on the, on the left, Kelvin Lau on the right. You may recognize both of these players from... Uh, the VWTV archives before. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. We promise you that we're not p cherry picking, folks. These guys are just actually pretty good, and we, we just keep finding a way to get them on our stream content. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes with our players. Yeah. Joining us on the mic now is our player on the left, the first order player for the evening, Mr. Aaron P. How are you doing, sir? Hey, Timbo. I'm doing all right. Glad to have you here, sir. Looking forward to an excellent uh, finals match here. Walk us through your your rock selection and your list selection. I brought the small debrises um, on account of the assumption that uh, Kelvin would be bringing something with efficiency, so a lot of ships. Um, and I didn't want him to have to be able to pilot through rocks um, when he needed to without consequences, which is sometimes the case. It was just a health and an efficiency list. Okay, fair enough. And you chose the, the corner that you chose to set up on just simply because he, he deployed in the opposite one, is that it? Yep. Also, I really favor the right-hand side. Okay, fair enough. And we were talking a little bit about this uh, off-center little uh, bendy yep. start that you've got on, on, on the draw who is quick there, and that is just because of your experience with how much extra board space you can gain with those banks after a couple turns? Yeah, all of them are actually not quite flush. Um, I find that it can be a huge advantage when you're flying at an opponent, and it gives you the opportunity to barrel roll, still have them in arc, and dodge their arc. Okay, joining me on the mic uh, now is our player on the right, the formidable Mr. Kelvin Lau. How you doing, buddy? Hey, good. How are you? Tell, uh, tell all the players about uh, you, how you're feeling tonight. You're excited to be on the PTL Finals. You just come off your system open win, uh, at placing top eight. Um, you know, really making a name for yourself in the Canadian X Wing team. Share us how you're feeling. Yeah, no, I'm really excited for this match because uh, Aaron's a great player. Like, he's always been solid. Him and I have played together forever. So we both kind of know each other. If we do any weird things, it's because I'm trying to get into his head. He's trying to get into my head. So, like, this, this is where, like, low-level X-Wing looks like high-level X-Wing. Or, wait, high-level X-Wing looks like low-level X-Wing. So it's going to be exciting. Um, I'm really excited to see how these lists play out. Uh, the list I have is obviously all just resistant A-Wings and Jess. Um, and I played a couple of times. It seems pretty good uh, against anything that has low ship counts because you have so many bodies. Uh, I am worried about Aaron's Kylo Ren just because he can just like outmaneuver all my ships and blow them up one by one. But hopefully uh, I can find a way to get around that. Now you and Kelvin have played each other a few times before. A million. <laughs> you guys have known each other for a few years. You guys are both excellent players. Um, is this the first time that you two have squared off at a grand final? I think so. No. No, no, no. Oh, there was another one. Going back to like early PTL. He actually flew five RZ1s with crack shot and snapshot, I think. Oh, those are uh, 1.0 RZ1s. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and I had a four ship Imperialist. Okay, fair enough. Oh, fair enough. Well, you know, I know that we're excited to see this. I personally have played against this list that you have here, and you beat me like a redheaded stepchild. So good luck, Aaron. Thank you, Tim. I'll send you the other guy. I think my win condition is just if I can get Kylo early, like I can take care of the rest of his lists. Uh, quick draw is obviously scary because he's got double tap, but with the two dice on two dice and I have advanced optics, scoring two hits on every time, it should be he should burn down pretty quickly, and he shouldn't be able to take down a lot of my ships. I mean, there's a there's a wild card here where he has afterburners to like arc dodge all my ships, but hopefully I have enough back arcs to be able to like trap him in such a way that it doesn't really help him out. So we'll see. This is going to be a really exciting match. Uh, I'm really interested to see how it plays out. Well, we're excited to be here and share it with you, mate. Um, 
Good luck tonight, and uh, we'll catch up with you on the table. Yeah, good seeing you too. All right, Tim, so that's a, a fairly uh, conservative start there out of Aaron and uh, quite the quite the speedy uh, start out of Kelvin. So it would be interesting to see how they're repositioning into, uh, into the start of this game. But as they go into uh, planning their dials for round two, why don't, I figured why don't we go through uh, – well, before we get into their list from the season, Dad, yeah, well, why don't we actually go through their list from the evening? Because we've interviewed the players and talked a little bit about their rock appointment and strategy. See, I was I was in the bathroom and having a, a salad during the interview, so I figured that that you'd already, <laughs> you already talked about the It's all the that list. blue milk you've been having there, bud. Lots of blue milk. Well, you know, you you're, put a lot of effort into getting the blue milk. So now you're you're, you're the uh, you're the uh, Empire slash FO player. So why don't you go through the one on the left, and I'll go on the one right. So Emperor Pappenhausen himself is flying uh, quick draw with fanatical pattern analyzer, special forces gunner, fire control system, and afterburners, and um, that's his uh, his ace of the ace squad he's got here. Um, he's also flying Kylo Ren with hate and pattern analyzer, and uh, Scorch with fanatical, and all of his ships come in at uh, a higher pilot skill than Kelvin's. So. You know, it's um, even his I-4 Scorch is going to be able to arc dodge, hopefully, one of Kelvin's uh, nine arcs and uh, uh, act as an ace there. Well, it's true. Um, you know, to your point, Aaron's got the uh, the initiative advantage in terms of higher pilot skills, but, but Kelvin's definitely got the ship count here. We'll run through Kelvin's list very quickly here. He's got a nice little low initiative uh, um, resistance synergy going here. We've got... Uh, four pilot skill, one RZ, two A-wings, all equipped with the same upgrades, which are uh, heroic, which provides um, the re-rolls if you roll all blanks. It's basically mm -hmm. like a get-out-of-jail-free card for the horrible, soul-crushing feeling of rolling all blanks on all your dice, and uh, as well as the, one of the um, lowest-costed tech upgrades, uh, Advanced Optics, which is um, a card that was released at the end of 1.0, which allowed you to retain a token mm -hmm. till the next turn. But they've definitely done away with a lot of that in 2.0, and Advanced Optics lets you convert that blank if you've got that focus token. So for a low initiative ship like an A-Wing, uh, if they make it to their initiative step one and they still have that focus token, Advanced Optics is a great investment. It's one of those ones that pays dividends in the long run. So so I might ask uh, producer Victor to bring up uh, Pattern Analyzer here as well if we're, since we've got some of those cards coming up. This is a very important uh, card in uh, Aaron's list. And we'll certainly, I'm assuming, see plenty of use with it today. And um, unlike advanced sensors, pattern analyzer does not action limit you at all. So you're going to be able to see quick draw linking off of that, and uh, the ships be able to form multiple actions. So I think so. what you've just said is the true uh, value of pattern mm -hmm. analyzer that you know many people know. And for some of the newer players that might be tuning in for the first time, there's two things you should know. One, we're never this quiet when we talk. We're, we're, we're usually very loud and boisterous, but Devin and I are um, at a new venue that we'll get to a little bit later. And uh, Well, I'm talking about a normal voice. I'm, I'm afraid we've had to turn Tim down just a tad. Look, I'm, I'm trying my best here. Okay? You're doing great, I'm bud. You're doing great. Mouth. I don't know what you want from me. Now, I don't know. I think we've got a very interesting... I mean, I'm going to drag us back into the game here for a second. Yeah, we were talking uh, about Pattern Analyzer. We were talking about Pattern Analyzer. I'm, I'm getting off topic. This is... Kelvin's created just an absolutely wonderful, you know, giant arc... Yeah, nice little net he's got going here. It doesn't really matter where uh, Aaron's ships go. Aaron's got to try and take a flank. Otherwise, he's going to play right into Kelvin's hands, I imagine. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about... Um, certainly, we've seen Kelvin here do two five forwards and boost with, with many of his ships. Um, and he's, he's set up a little trap over here. Uh, if, if Kylo Ren goes quickly, um, he'll be able to get him. Uh, Having some trouble with that erase button there, but yeah, I had uh, yeah, it's it's harder than it looks. <laughs> but uh, Aaron not falling for that, of course, and he is uh, turning away. Real nice there. Well, Aaron's no fool. Um, Kylo definitely Absolutely. has the double repositioning, which is something in 2.0 that's very limited from a chassis perspective, and you know Kylo's ability to. Um, be unpredictable like that, coupled and with his ability to have those really fast blue maneuvers, makes him very, very tough to pin down. He's one of those pieces where if you don't, if you if you commit and and put all your guns on him and you don't kill him and he slips away from you, it's tough to get guns on him again. And here, I, I don't know if it was caught in the original discussion or or if it was recorded or not. We initially talked a little bit about 
how Aaron sets his ships off just a little bit askew from 90 degrees or, or adjacent to the board edge. And so you can see how that's benefiting him here, how, how Scorch and Quickdraw are just slightly spread. Um, Quickdraw slightly rotated this way, and then Scorch slightly rotated this way. So he's getting just a little more oomph on that arc. Well, it's really going to help in Scorch with his approach vector, right? If he had come straight up the board, he'd be kind of facing this way at this point. But Scorch has a much nicer um, approach vector for this. Um, for where the rocks yeah, are. For where his gap that's got right in front of him. No, we don't uh, have any round two combat, so I think uh, yeah. you want to talk about their, their seasons? Before we get into their seasons, why don't we highlight a little bit about why this PCL Season 12 is so special? Well, this is our first 2.0 season here, Tim, So, and it was a back-to-basic season. We had no bonus points. Um, we definitely had a few janky formats get tried out. We had, we had, like, uh, by the end of 1.0, we were doing a lot of... A lot of playing around with formats, and so this was really great. We had uh, a turnout in the high 40s. We had a great season here uh, playing across Toronto. Uh, again, we play at face-to-face -face games. We play at Sword and Board. We play at 401 games, and uh, we, play, we, have, we have some players who play at Harry, Harry T. Yeah, we but sure do. But here we are today. We're at a very special special venue. Yeah, it's a, very really, excited, it's a very special excited day, today. really. And, you know, our, our PTL Season 12 Grand Final is always a kind of a fun day for everybody in the league. Yeah. Everybody cheers on their, their champion who makes it that far. But the reason that we're really excited about this particular one is because we are casting today, folks, um, from... Snakes and Lattes. Snakes and Lattes. We're at Snakes and Lattes. Right so now. one of the heartbreaks of the PTL recently is that we pride ourselves on offering venues across the city uh, that we've you know, reached out to and made relationships with in order to offer places for all of our membership to play at. And sadly, our Midtown location, 401 Games, uh, you know, evolved their business and their business evolved to a point where they had to kind of downsize the amount of play space that they had available to the public. And as a result... Well, there was some issue with their, their space being turned into condos and now it's not being turned into condos. Sure. There's, more, there's, there's, there's more to it. Long story short, our, our midtown location went away. And that kind of coincided with some great timing from the management at the midtown location from Snakes and Lattes who were looking to develop more of a tabletop uh, presence. So we are very happy to announce uh, to anybody who hears our voices who's interested in X-Wing and has trouble either making it to the east end or the west end on either a Wednesday, which is going to be the main night as a backup. We're also offering Thursdays that um, our friends at Snakes and Lattes Midtown are going to be hosting the PTL League nights on uh, on Wednesday nights uh, and a backup on Thursday nights. So I'm excited for it. And we've got the the 13th season, uh, our second uh, 2.0 season starting in uh, next Wednesday. In next uh, on well, the 8th next uh, week. Yeah. Next week. So, <laughs> so we'll yeah, be here on Wednesday. I'll be here on Wednesday for sure. Yeah. So uh, as of next week, uh, which is the Sunday, the 17th of March, on yeah. that week, you've got Tuesday you can play it face-to-face. -face. Wednesday, Wednesday we've got be. Snakes and Lattes. Yeah. Friday we'll be at Sword and Board. Yeah. Thursday at Game School in, in Scarborough. Yeah. And then again. Harry T's along there as ha well. Harry, Harry T's on Tuesdays, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're also happy to anybody out west. I think that there's a, a game shop out in Oakville as well that's starting to start. Up, uh, well, well, they want to start. Well, do you not well. play Mondays at uh, X Planet out there? Jeff Assiri and I kind of got away from the Mondays. Um, yeah. I think that there's more of an interest from the Oakville guys, but we definitely need a few more people to reach out to our uh, our, our club on on Facebook or Star Wars Cream Ontario just to make sure, sure. we get um, the group there. Just make it, we get all aligned and get it out there so that we. The last thing we want is one or two people showing up expecting a bigger crowd, and then yeah. the, the crowd actually shows up the following night or something like that, right? So, so I'm I'm super excited. Uh, I'm I'm excited to to come here to Snakes and Lattes. They've got. Uh, fantastic Here. business. They've got, <laughs> you know. Let's be real, folks. It's wet. <laughs> it's real wet up here. Blue milk for everybody. I'm excited, Tim. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be in this space. It's a very positive space. It's a very uh, alcohol-friendly space. No, you know what? It's adults-friendly. Uh, it's an adult-friendly space. Adult friendly space. friends downstairs. Yeah. Great, great uh, table space upstairs for X-Wing. Yeah. Uh, the streaming room that we're using tonight is immaculate and beautiful. Uh, we're really happy in our folks. They've been very generous with the amount oh, of space yeah. they've given us, so we're very yeah, excited. Management, uh, big big shout out there. So we're, we're back into the activation phase. Um, when we get to the planning phase next turn, why don't we go through their, their seasons? What do you think Kelvin's going to These guys aren't doing, doing much right now. I don't know, man. I think Kelvin's going to I mean, Kelvin just there. threw down uh, two focus tokens. I'm not sure how that that's how that works. But um, there we go. Now we figured it out. Yeah, I think they only get one focus token there. So we, we, were, we went functionally through their lists, but 
you know, Kelvin's been playing a lot of A-Wings recently. He just got his invite to uh, Worlds with with A-Wings oh, and Poe. three A-Wings at the system open, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, um, he plays re reposition aces. He plays his re efficiency reposition lists. He's extremely good at it. Um, well, Aaron Kelvin's been playing A-Wings since the RZ1s from 1.0. I mean, yeah, I've said it before, and I'll say it again if you haven't heard my old expression. Whoever thought it was a good idea to give A-Wings a rear arc and give those A-Wings to Kelvin well, that's, Lau, that's, they were sorely mistaken. Well, uh, the... Both the Re Rebel and Resistance A-Wings in uh, in the EU have rear arcs or a rear rear firing guns. They they pivot, um, so it's unfortunately unfortunate we don't see that on the Rebel ones, but we do have it on the Resistance ones. Okay, so we've got just Pava bringing up the rear here. She's the one keeping the widest arc. And in terms of target priority, do you really think it's up to uh, Aaron to take the bait and, and go after Jess first? Because it looks like he's ready to commit here. I mean, um, if I were Aaron, I would not be committing right here. Um, I'd, be, I'd be getting out of dodge. And it's very interesting to see him make that decision. He has essentially only committed um, with Scorch, so it is to speak. And and he's he is um, probably not going to take substantive fire from four A-Wings 4 and 5. No, I'm convinced that 5's out of range. Uh, and 4 is going to be close. Now, uh, in order to make this turn uh, valuable for Aaron, he'd have to boost in. But he's not. He's, he's coming yeah, back. There's he's also getting a chance out. that that boost could have failed and he could have hit Scorch. I think he's, he's reserved to try and say, you know what, I'm going to bring I'm surprised he turned turn. in um, Scorch into, into jousting uh, this list this quickly. Um, I expected him to continue up the side, but had he continued sort of this way with Scorch, right, that would have... Uh, been able to allow Kelvin to recombine his forces in a more efficient way for the next round, and he'd be able to hit him a little bit harder yeah, if he delayed the... I uh, think that's the key thing to take away from, from dealing with A-Wings, is that you know the longer you give them, the, the easier it is for them to get where they want, because they're really fast. So now they were checking range from Quick Draw to Jess. Did we have range there? Yeah, they were just here. Can, can we put Jess Pava up on... Uh, can we get Jess Pava the pilot? Yeah, we're going to get our table judge to double-check whether or not uh, Quick Draw has range to Jess. The only so way to tell for sure is to actually get that ruler flat on the table. Yeah, and Jess is really interesting. Um, while they're determining that, you can see that um, okay, she ruled can, out of range. She can roll one. She can spend one charge to re-roll. I believe it is actually. Can we have Jess back? Is it? She uh, can spend her own charge or a charge from an equipped droid. Well, since she has no droids, it's just uh, one potential re-roll per turn. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, nice to give her a BB unit because the BB units have a scaling cost, so it's mm -hmm. two extra charges for I think only three or four points. Uh, just two results from Quick Draw. On uh, the A-Wing? I assume this is on A-Wing 2. That's where they were pointing. Yep, range 3. Cleanly yeah. evaded. Yeah. I'm not expecting much from this round. Um, certainly I'm worried for Scorch, though. Scorch is um, going to... Okay, um, so we're going to check... Range 2 there. Check to see who Scorch wants to shoot at. The other question that Aaron has to ask himself, of course, is, is this the turn to use Scorch's pilot ability? Scorch oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you haven't even stripped a token yet. You really think you're going to get damage to her on anybody? Jess has up to one reroll. She's at range three. Scorch has... If you um, don't keep your focus token on Scorch, you're going to take, what, four shots this turn? There's a chance that, that A-Wing 4 has arc on Scorch. But adding that extra die, you're not spending that focus on offense, no matter what, because the number of shots you're going to take. Mm. So adding that extra die is going to give him enough of a little potential bump there. Well, for one. But, and now he's got to spend. Like, yeah. Kelvin's going to spend. Kelvin's right? going to have to use that token. So, like, I'm not saying that would have been two blanks if he hadn't rolled the extra die. But the the FO has got such a great dial that okay, he just really... Just taking a range three on Scorch here. Really isn't going to... Don't and need the focus. Hit, hit, and crit. Scorch. Range three here. Scorch Could takes take one. one. Procking okay. Fanatical. Yeah. Now he's got no shields. Fanatical will function um, as intended. We can bring Fanatical up. Perfect. Really, really good value for two points here. So, does four have a shot? Looks like yes. And off we go. Mm, spend. Yep. Just one. Four dice from Scorch here. Didn't stress yourself for nothing. Ooh, that's a really tough roll. I'd, I'd spend here. Um, Aaron. He's got one attack left. No, two attacks left, eh? 
It's a tough but, call uh, for Aaron. I think he might have to take the damage here. Uh, it's always tough with TIE Fighters, right? Yeah, like uh, six out, it's a bird in the hand worth two in the bush, right? If you spend the Focus Token now, that, that A-Wing 3 could roll through two hits. You don't know. And you might natural out of the next two and be frustrated that you took one, and uh, or you might natural out of the next two and like never spend the Focus, but... Yeah, it's tough to get a it's tough to get a, a good call here. I've flown enough A wing, uh, not A wings. I've flown enough Tie Fighters. I I know that uh, <laughs> it's it's a it's a tough choice to make. Um, so it looks like he is keeping it and taking one. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, we're gonna get a quick cut. Uh, Kelvin says no. I don't cut my friend's de decks. There's that damage on Scorch. And okay, number two going to take his range two on Scorch here. Just one. For one. And I'm uh, that statistically, yeah, spend it now. Number then three going to take his shot. For, for two. two. See if Scorch can keep his hot rolling up. Yep, and he's two. fine. There we go. So, I mean, I think that that was a pretty good example of, you know, pretty standard dice there. You know? Um, yeah, it would have been nice if Chris Scorch could have snuck a shot off. But um, at the end of the day... You know, what we've got is Scorch out front, and Kelvin has th a really good opportunity to kind of close the net here um, and get some multiple guns on uh, on quick draw. because ultimately if, if Kelvin's entire list shoots at quick draw in one turn, there's a pretty good chance he's going to take all those shields down. And if Kelvin, uh, sorry, if Aaron, I should say, doesn't get um, enough bang for his buck back on the cost of those shields for quick draw, mm -hmm. then, uh, then Aaron could be in big trouble. Oh, for sure, and one thing that uh, viewers need to remember, is, and and I know I, I watch veteran players make this mistake, I've made this mistake, is that you only get one bonus attack per round. So if Kelvin's sitting there and just plink, 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 just, just pushing minor damage through on, uh, on on quick draw, just the one, you know, on one turn, he just has his all his little A-wings just push one damage through at a time, mm -hmm. you know, and... And not Aaron loses all of the, all those shields at once, but not at once, not from one attack, but from, you know, uh, one turn. I mean, that's just going to be a real feels bad man moment. Well, these two players, I reckon, are going to take some time uh, to set their dials on this turn. It's an important turn. So why don't we go through their seasons super quick? Sounds um, good to me. I'll start with uh, kind of an overview. So we run our system uh, seven matches in seven weeks. You got to play seven different players. And what's our uh, what's our mantra core rule there, Debo? Can't you play cannot the play the same name pile twice. You got it. So Aaron um, finished fifth overall in the Swiss, and Kelvin finished fourth overall in the Swiss. Our Swiss is not one day. It's seven weeks long, but that's what mm -hmm. we refer to it as. Um, Aaron had uh, uh, seven games played with five wins and two losses. So did Kelvin. They were both five and two. And so there's uh, a, some overlap on these names and a lot of great players. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Aaron had slightly less points killed. He had 1099 mm -hmm. to Kelvin's 1188. Over because, seven games. Well, it was all this one game that Aaron played against this this scrub named Timbo, who, who he, Aaron only got 26 points destroyed. But you know what? That guy's probably a jerk, so moving yeah. on. Um, both of them came out of the league uh, season with 24 league points because, of course, yep. we assigned two points for playing a game and two points for winning. And you always then, get something um, for playing at the PTL. Yeah, Kelvin's strength of schedule was point seven seven, above excellent, abo above average, which means that his his opponents that's a great finish higher in the standings than uh, Aaron's. Aaron's actually didn't get posted his strength of schedule because uh, too many of Aaron's uh, opponents didn't play the full seven matches. So um, no problem. Uh, we'll move on. Aaron used a total of twenty seven ships in mm -hmm. his seven matches. Eighteen of them were named, and nine of them were generics. No, oh, fantastic. Kelvin used. 30 ships, so three more, mm -hmm. but 22 named and eight generics. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, Aaron had uh, the pleasure of playing both you and I. Uh, I believe those are his two losses. They are his two losses. So enough. he went 5-2 and two in Swiss. and uh... <laughs> He's 0-2 against league bosses and casters, though. <laughs> <laughs> league bosses and casters. Uh, his first game was against Mike Reverso, and he used a scum list with... Um, Lando, an ORP, and two Fang Fighters. It's a fun list. Yeah. He also had a game against Jeff Asiri, which where he played uh, Garvin uh, in the ARC-170, Colby, the T-60 X-Wing, uh, Captain Rex in the TIE Fighter, and Rourke in the Hawk. Uh, we will get back to uh, the rest of Aaron's lists at the end of the planning phase. We took the liberty of taking together some of their... Um, 
and seasons got here, guys, just because, honestly, it's a two-hour final. And if it gets down to a couple of A-wings versus Kylo, we could be here a while. I mean, that's a, a great maneuver there from, from Kelvin. He's uh, using his, uh, P his, his Initiative 1 guys as little blockers there. Um, and now... He's with with uh, A wing two has blocked the hard two from Scorch, but I imagine Scorch is going to be doing a, a three forward or a uh, a three forward here to the screen to clear his uh, God, to clear those, that those stress. templates are so nice. The the templates are wonderful. The uh, the system open ones. Well, the I ones was like the ones with the V on them are the Luke the red five right, red three. I thought five. Oh, he's red five. Yeah. No, he's the five forward. The red three is the the three is the the red three. I think that the no. Okay. No. So each so uh, folks, what we're talking about is a system open template. So we just saw one on the board there. Tim drew a beautiful little heart around it. Um, each one of the template speeds is based on the the pilot. One of the members of the right. red squadron. So red one is the one maneuvers. Red two is the two maneuvers. Red three is the three maneuvers. Red four. Is the one four maneuver and red five is the one five. Sure, I think that the turns were were, were self picked though. I'm pretty sure the V on the on the two turn refers to red five. I could be wrong. But you are you know wrong because it's the, it's the decals on the side of the helmet. I will fight you right now. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you can you can believe what you want. <laughs> Jess Pava doing a leisurely. Uh, Jess Pava move. in a very interesting move there. The way that uh, Kelvin has has uh, set up his ships there is that if if Aaron does the three forward, he will be blocked on. Uh, A-Wing 4, allowing A-Wing 2 and Jess both to be able to shoot Scorch. He's going to kill Box and he's dead. If that's the Very difficult maneuver coming up here. Uh, Devo. Looks like leave we're it, proxying leave everything. Leave it to Aaron P to try and guess the one spot that won't get blocked by all of Kelvin's A-Wings is the 5 forward from Scorch to retain his stress token here. That sounds like a pretty good maneuver. Well, he's like, yeah. Kelvin's going to try and block me. Unfortunately, now get everybody's got a hand on a mark, and anybody going to be able to use the five four words? Well, uh, we should give this moment here to to shout out our table judge, Jackie Long. Jackie uh, Long, ca the castle Jackula. Uh, looks like he's made it over. Yeah, I mean that's how going fast works. No doubt. So um, Kelvin set up to block all the greens, and so Aaron just decided not to do. I suppose but I should say blue. Well, my real question the, is, uh, is, is that Quick Draw going to get in there and try and take a ship out, or is Quick Draw going to try and do something squirrely and get out of dodge? I don't know if there's a squirrely location for him. Kylo's it's a hard first, anyway. Yeah, Kylo's, Kylo's getting in there. So it'll be interesting to see if Kylo makes room for Quick Draw. And again, um, those beautiful PTL templates. Very interesting spot because there's two A wings missing from the board. Oh, it's okay. We oh. fly casual. It's fine. Okay, so Kylo has to decide where he wants to go here. Currently they need to put some A wings back. Currently, boys. he is in every arc. Nope, that's not yeah, where it was. Yeah, four was yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, just bumped that one, and then just goes back down. Okay, so Kylo has to decide how many arcs he wants to try and get out of. I think that the barrel roll left is. Good to dodge the arcs of four and three, but then you're kind of locked into a um, a one turn the following turn unless you go over the rock. So I don't not like the barrel roll left. Actually, the barrel roll left kind of puts you in a spot where I like it if too. you need to bail next turn, you can because the only one that um, could block you is, 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 is five, right? So if we could get Kylo ran on the just so we can see the chassis ability here, which although it doesn't look like it's going to be used. Well, it um, will be used because it triggers after defending. The sad news is that for Cal, for Aaron to be no, able to No, it says after you perform an action, you may perform a boosted barrel roll. Right? right. I was talking the chassis ability, oh, the not, chassis not, ability Kylo's not, ability. not Kylo's ability. So, okay. I mean, Aaron's looking to probably spend force on the attack with that target lock, um, then uh, get hit, regain uh, force, and certainly um, if you blow a shit up, ship... If you blow a ship up, it can't attack you. Um, I'm just going to check to see if Quick Draw fits in the intervening space between Kylo and A-Wing 3 here. It looks like, looks he, like does, he does. Which would negate fits one shot from Quick Draw. If it sits, it fits. Um, I mean, Quick Draw, they're probably taking three shots. Not ideal with no tokens. I don't think Quick Draw's taking any shots. Bro. Jackie, you know he, where it goes. I think you put all your guns okay. on Kylo this turn. Mm, you think? Kylo's sitting there with a target lock. I mean, he's got hate and he's force, got hate. But he's, that means he's got to take damage to do it. So you get high, Kylo to half health. Oh, 
So we've got full, full force and half health. I'll take that trade. A quick draw there. No actions this round. No um, Aaron's got to rely on his, uh, his, his well-known ability to roll good dice. I mean, I feel like that was evidenced on this at the system open. But my concern is quick draw, taking minor damage from, from three ships. Four ships. Four ships. Quick so draws range two to Jess, range one to A wing four. I think you. I don't. I don't know what I would do in this situation. It's a tough call for Aaron. Um, Very tough call. Everything. I mean, Jess doesn't have uh, a focus, and she does, and she rolls less green dice. It's going to be harder to get her off the board. She's only rolling. And, she only got one re-roll, too. Yeah, well, she only got one re-roll, and, and Kylo isn't target locked, but looking like he's going to shoot uh, A-Wing 4 there with not great results. Just, uh, just that one die and evaded. So I think um, below average roll there from Aaron and a statistically average roll there from Kelvin. and That'll do it. Uh, okay, that's so real unfortunate for Kylo. Kylo still gets to shoot. Going to shoot the same target. No, uh, Kylo Kylo's going to shoot the shoot. one he's got a target lock on. That's Correct. right. Uh, he's, well, probably gonna a result. he's probably going to spend the force here. Yeah. Yep. Force for four. I mean, that's a that's exactly what you want to see, see from Kylo. Kylo gets so Oof. Spends the focus, shields takes two shields. Down. Okay, so half health on A-Wing number three. 15, 19 points on the board for yep. Aaron. Jess is going to shoot first into quick draw. Range two. That's not what Quickdraw wants to see. Hit, hit crit. So two shields. Two shields recharges one force with hate. Um, nope, that was into Quickdraw. So um, Quickdraw now gets to shoot uh, for another one. That's really disappointing results on four dice. Yeah. Eight. Uh, that looks like it was into number four based on the number of dice that were rolled. All right, so this is number four into, I believe, quick draw four, three. The last shield gone, crit onto quick draw again as I went over. In 2.0, there is only one bonus attack per round, and so quick draw uh, cannot uh, continue attacking with that attack. Uh, we're going to see a spend focus here, two hits. Um, that's a. Uh, I was going to say a dead quick draw, but almost. He's so got one health left, yep. which means he's got two A-wings left to finish the job. This is a uh, rough position here. Could be obstructed, could not be obstructed. Now, Kylo Ren is still a fantastic ship. Um, not, not what Aaron wants to see, oh, but quick his dice lives. came through. Yeah. Uh, for now. Uh, Three's going to shoot at Kylo here. I mean, Kelvin just... Nut, 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 natties. So Kylo's going to spend the force and take a shield and then regen a force uh, with hate. So that's how that works. Yeah. That's pretty fantastic. I think hate's one of my favorite cards. So Kylo pretty Ren's pilot ability is going to trigger here. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to see uh we're going to go through a yeah. damage deck soon. So Aaron has to be really careful about which crit he wants to choose here. You think? You think it's just not straight blinded or No, Aaron's opting not to use Kylo's pilot ability. Interesting. Yeah. Damn it. He wants to uh, not have to waste a good crit on an A-Wing that could potentially die next turn anyway. That's fair. He does have half on four. Art, he's eliminated. Number three. Number, number three, three just shot at him. He's, yeah. uh, looks like he's taken one damage on number yeah. four. So end of the um, combat phase, we've got Jess Pava having taken two shields, one of the A-Wings having taken one shield, and one of the A-Wings at half health. So a total of four. Five damage on Kelvin's side of the board, and a total of six damage, seven, eight damage on Aaron's side of the board. Um, after two rounds of combat, not ideal for for Aaron here in an exchange. Aaron losing five health on quick draw is not what he wanted to see here. Although I think um, Kelvin's preferred state of affairs would be for quick draw to be dead right now. Yeah. Um, certainly. Uh, Aaron naturaled out and rolled two of eights there at the end, and and sort of uh, saved his bacon. Uh, hopefully he's going to have to um, do something similar to um, how he flew Scorch last turn and sort of get out of dodge, save his bacon. Well, let me get back to Aaron's season while we're at here. His third game of the season okay. was against Paul Field. It was a 200 nothing. Paul's victory. a great player. Great player, Paul Field. Him and uh, him and Paul had a Palo mirror. Aaron had uh, Scum, Han, Fenrau, and Pela. Mm -hmm. Great match. Uh, Aaron's fourth match of the season was against Jeffrey Pickles. Uh, he won at 200 to 18 in what I hear was a bit of a, a rock paper, a rock crushes scissors match. Um, 
Aaron had three academy ties, um, a cutlass punisher, a striker, and the top ace on the board, Mr. Turfaner, believe it or not. His fifth match of the season was against myself, which he lost 122 to 26. And he flew uh, Poe, Eloetsi, and Greer. Mm -hmm. um, he played his sixth match against yourself, which he lost uh, 125 to 107, mm -hmm. in which he flew Echo, Death Rain, and Ca or Lieutenant Psy. I have no memory of that game. Uh, you don't have memory of what you had for breakfast. I'm not su surprised. That's completely valid comment. <laughs> <laughs> his, and his seventh <laughs> match of the season was against the man, the myth, the legend himself, Joe Silva, which he won 200. The gentle giant. Oh, the gentle giant himself. Joe Silva is the only man that I've ever met who would willingly tear up the floorboards of a game store for a friend to recover a, a lost regional die. <laughs> and did. And, and Kelly did. let us. And Kelly let us, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, so moving over to our other player, Kelvin. Um, Kelvin had a really great season as well. As we mentioned, he had a little bit more points killed. Same ratio. And we'll go through his season uh, really quickly here. His first game of the season was against Scott Moore. And he won 251. And he played... A scum list, four Lom with Palob, Unkar Plutt, another quad jumper, and L337. Uh, his second game of the, and keeping in mind, folks, that m almost all of these uh, seven games, probably five, at least five, if not six of the sevens, were under the original uh, launch point structure. So if you're looking at yourself and going, hey, that doesn't fit, you're right, it doesn't fit anymore. Um, Kelvin's second game of the season was against John Woodhouse, which he snuck out a victory 200-146 to 146 using Wedge, Sabine Wren, Jan Ors, and Arvel. Another A-wing. Mm. Um, his third uh, w uh, match of the season was a win against the uh, the PTL Open champ himself, Robin McNeil. Kelvin won that 102-34. to 34. I think Robin went 0-7 uh, this season. Yeah, he did real well. The curse of the champion. The curse of the champion. It is the curse of the champion. It's so true. And Kelvin flew uh, IGA, IGB, and the Lando escape pod. Really interesting list. Uh, both the IGs just basically had elusive and advanced sensors, so super cool. Um, we're almost through the activation phase, so I'll hurry this up, well, and we'll get uh, through yeah. the seasons. Oh, well, um, we are. Here we have uh, yeah, you the A-Wings. We'll finish it up. The, the, yeah, the A-Wings are phase. starting to move, so. Um, okay, so A-Wing 3. Um, moving forward through Kylo and Quick Draw, rotating backwards and maintaining arc on the whole shebang, and and slow rolling there to keep that rear arc active and and uh, functional, right? So and and you can see no, that one's facing forward. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, his arc is forward. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, I think that uh, that A wing over there on the top that you just mentioned is there to try and get Scorch because Scorch, Scorch can't K turn. Scorch has no, to he has do it. the hard two in. Has to do the hard two, yeah. So the question will be whether or not Scorch can maintain arc on the A-Wing. So I think that Kelvin's probably taking A-Wings 5 and 2 to try and finish off Scorch here. It looks like. Um, it'll be interesting to see if... Oh, But also, uh, Quickdraw does now have a 5 forward. And he certainly could do a similar to maneuver to, to what Scorch did last turn and just try and book it. And so 5 has swung around there uh, to... Oh, that could land just ominously close to that roche as the french say i don't think that's the french word for rock roche in roche roche no roche all right i think quick draw does the one turn so that looks like a, a target lock there on uh on kylo from from jess from jess pava okay so as we expect is scorch doing the green or so the blue two turn two, yeah stress question will be whether Scorch takes a defensive token or try to barrel roll in for the shot on number two. Number two is undamaged, so I don't know if that's the right call here. If he gets in, it's probably going to be a range one shot. He's got fanatical, so four dice with a soft focus uh, means now, he remind probably me, dies. The tie FOs do not have linked actions, right? They do not have linked that's actions. That's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. Kylo's doing a 4K here. Going to take advantage of his pattern analyzer. Yeah. Probably going to be able to target lock, barrel roll, and try and finish off Jess Pava. I wonder if we'll see something similar from Quick Draw. Now, Quick Draw can um, sloop and afterburners and uh, has a bunch of tricks that uh, Aaron has paid good points for and hasn't used yet. And he might want to get some use out of them before she gets off the board. Fearless Aaron Poppenhausen saying pattern analyzer, not unlike the governor of, former governor of California, 
I don't know why he put an Arnold Schwarzenegger voice on the path of Don Eliza, but he did. I'll have to ask him about that afterwards. Because with this good German technology in the Get future. Get to the chopper. Uh, here we have a boost that's a very interesting use of pattern analyzer. I think he's got to get out of quick draws uh, way. Uh, yeah. Um, he also dodged. In terms of arc. using hate, um, okay, we got a five which arc, arc did draw. he dodge? Uh, I suppose he dodged five's arc. Is yeah, it, he dodged uh, five's arc. He put him himself into range one of the other two. But I'm wondering if he could have barrel rolled um, into damage here. To shoot five, um, which has five's undamaged. I think undamaged. he's going for the kill oh, right, on three. Mind. If he can kill three before three shoots, then he's only taken one shot this turn. Yeah, that's and then he's got hate, uh, which is uh, a great little defensive upgrade. So no, yeah. all right, all right. I'm 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 being sold on the maneuvers. Uh, certainly, this is a very important um, decision that he has to make with a uh, quick draw. That looks like it was a uh, a regular maneuver. So now we're going to focus, focus rotate. rotate, and try and not kill five, but uh, I think get Quick damage. Takes a shot on on Jess Pava here. Try to get another damage through. Jess took a target lock this turn, didn't she? So she's yep. she's got no defensive token. She's got one reroll with five being where she is. Um, I mean, it looks like it was only a four forward from Quick Draw. I'm surprised that uh, Aaron didn't. Kay. But if he's going to roll, yeah, he's attacking the A-Wing, so he's going to have three dice because yep. he's pointed his gun backwards. And uh, producer uh, Victor, if you wouldn't mind, uh, the fanatical on Scorch on the left is scratched out. It's a permanent uh, EPT, a permanent talent. And uh, fanatical is active on quick draw. So quick draw has rolled know, three hits on has three whole, three hits 11 on 11 dice. dice. So that's, that's rough. That's why you take target locks, folks. Um, here, range one from Kylo into... Blue three, and are we gonna spend the? F Ooh, spending the lock on the blank. Gonna hopefully get a hit so we can mod his force and get. Well, he's got target there. lock. Yeah, reroll it all, Aaron. Okay, he's leaving. He's leaving one focus for for the force. Um, and so three hits there on hit, number hit three. And crit. We'll see what A wing three can come up. Spend the focus. Takes just a crit. Crit going through. We'll see what oh. crit comes up. Well, if it's uh, direct hit, then that might be good. Uh, but I it don't know. It is not direct hit. Ah, uh, it is damage sensor array. No. Wonderful. Up on stream. Well, it's a good thing for uh, uh, you know A wing's got to clear that. Unfortunately, he can't do uh, anything like that. Okay, we got A wing five taking the kill shot option on quick draw. Well, see for two, I mean quick draw can technically survive, and he will not. Good night, sweet prince. Goodbye, quick draw. Or princess. Good night, sweet princess. Quick draw confirmed as a girl. Number two going to take matter. his range two shot on Scorch here. And see if we can't get a double kill. Nope, just one. Direct hit again. That is not great. Um, Scorch there spending Shocking his... results uh, from, from Aaron's dice again. Well, they're not Aaron's dice. They're, uh, they're using a pool of Kelvin's dice. Oh, so. that'll do it. Aaron's got to curse his fingers. Um... So Kylo's actually considering using his pilot ability here because so three has rolled it. Looks like he's spending the force there, taking no damage. Number and four going to shoot as well. No force left on Kylo. Kylo going to have to evade all of this. Ooh, just Take, taking the one shield. Takes one shield, regens a force. See, quick, Kylo's dice work. Yeah. <laughs> Kylo's dice work because he has the force. <laughs> it's true. Fair point. You know, certainly I don't think... I mean, Kelvin's in a very good position by taking quick draw off okay, the board. So Certainly, we're, yeah. we're recharging one with hate, and then end phase, he should be recharging a second one. Correct. And yeah. he'll just run into the next turn with uh, with two? Well, it will depend if he declared the hate recharge, because the he hate did. recharge... He did. You, you can see over here he flipped it. Oh, there we go. And then okay, there he is, flipped there the second is. one. Yep. He just flipped the second one. He's good. Aaron knows what's going on. I'm just because just because he can't roll dice doesn't mean he can't play the game. <laughs> it's all good. All right, well, let's get back to Kelvin's season here. After he played uh, the champ and, and and beat the champ, like he's, the champ stole something. Kelvin had uh, probably one of the most infuriating losses of his X-wing career. I've, I mean, uh, he's had a lot of those. Poor Aaron. I, I've actually never seen this look in his eyes where he wanted to choke me out so badly. I had a Nim, mm -hmm. and I had a uh, quad jumper. Sorry, two quad jumpers, a Captain Nim, and 
uh, a Star Viper. And, that sounds like a miserable and list. Kel- and Kelvin flew a great Rebel list, which was Nora in the Y Wing, uh, Luke, Blount, and AP5. And the end game got down to my Dalen Oberos Star Viper against his Nora Y Wing. And it was this last turn, and a cocked eye I called, and that won the game for me. And. It goes to show a lot about the PTL because, you know, we can have games that, that piss each other off. I can have games that Kelvin smokes me. I, we can have games where I sneak one out against him, and then we still go get a sandwich and a drink afterwards and uh, and move on as buddies. So that's a good one. Now, I'm very excited that uh, Scorch is still alive, and hopefully he'll be able to come in and uh, start trying to get damage onto uh, four or th- where's where's three. So if he if he does a, a fairly fast maneuver, right, he should be able to start bringing around Scorch's guns to bear on on these hurt A wings, um, and so certainly I'm hoping to see something like that. Well, here's uh, a perfect the way that that Kylo is positioned too is very in like you have to remember like when you are maneuvering with a ship, generally where you're going to end up is in your firing arc out to range two. So he's in a good position there as well where he can start to chase some of these damaged A-wings and start to claw his way back up. Oh, you're absolutely right, Dev. I mean, you know, the, one of the benefits of these A-wing lists that we've seen mainly in the hands of Kelvin mm-hmm. is that now is where uh, he has to either fake out or, or go on it because what these A-wings can do here is one of two things. Either two goes in for the block on the turn on Scorch and then four comes in to shoot. Or the other option that I like even better is two goes fast, mm-hmm. rotates and shoots backwards, four comes, and they just pinch pincer and kill Scorch right in the middle. Um, well, hopefully Scorch is going to be able to kill one before that happens. But uh, Well, yeah. four is at half health. So yeah. if two can block Scorch and prevent Scorch from getting that shot on number four, number four has a, sh- a chance. But to your point, Scorch is four dice at range one. Yeah. He takes that stress With token. fanatical, perhaps with a target lock. You don't know. Now, what I'm wondering is what a Talon roll here. You think that clears? Yes, 100%. Yeah, that's a great positioning for Jess. It is, unless Kylo goes after Jess to kill her this turn, which is what I would do. You'd hard one uh, over to Aaron's side of the board. and uh, I would go after Jess with Kylo this turn for one reason. Yeah. Jess is not going to have a roll this turn. He's got a little stressy stress there. So that's going to be very difficult for him to, uh, well, no, to I mean, chase. Two bank boost. Two bank boost, okay, two bank that gets focus you boost, or two bank evade boost. That's a very interesting position there. So I think that that fulfills the, a similar function. Yep. If we see the rotate back, and that gives uh, a good coverage there. Well, we discussed the notion of time on target with these A wings in our, our it's semifinal huge match. Massive. Um, for the newer players chiming in, time on target refers to regardless of range or modifications that you have, just the and, sheer amount of time that your arcs are pointed at the other ships. And, and there again, you just saw from Kelvin, when he picked up the ship, he does the rotate in the air, right? Which, although that's just a little bit out of time with what's going on, thing. It, it stops you from messing things up on the board. Yeah. It's a really great way of doing it. I and really encourage sure your arcs are in the right it. places. You, you declare the link to action when you've got the ship in your hand. You know what you're doing. Yeah, it's an etiquette thing. It would have cleared, but he's just going the other way. That's all right. It's not a bad call. It keeps you from having uh, Kylo chase you, I think. You know, There's okay, the hard so three. taking the hard three just in case that first A-wing went up there to try and block him. Scorch going to be able to, to our point earlier, take the possible target lock. Now that four is this ship here, right? So it's at half hull. So here's, I'm yeah. sure Aaron's hoping here. I'm, I'm betting we're going to see a target lock. No, also, a focus. The damage sensor array is only focus, so A wing three has no shot this turn because he could only focus. Well, he m- looks like he's got. Looks like Aaron had the same thought we did that. You know, Jess might be back here. Yeah. Um, certainly, he still has Jess's target lock on him. Um, that, but that number three definitely ha- does have a shot currently. Time on target. So, time on target. So, well, I imagine we're going to be seeing a, a boost here from. Uh, from Kylo, the question is, I think, is does Aaron want to stress again and, and take a... I think you take a target lock boost this turn. Because you've, yeah. f- you've got the force for defense. Yeah, you're not wrong. You get to spend one little... You, you little can pick up, if you can pick up a lock. Little just, zhuzh, you just zhuzh the dice a little bit. It. He's doing it. He's taking the lock on Jess Pava here and probably going to good link for the boost because you can two-turn the following turn around that rock, right? Okay. No. Um, no link from Kylo, which leads me to believe he's probably going to try and talent around that rock the following turn. 
Okay. Well, why, why, Scorch why, why bring pattern, pattern analyzer if you're not going to use it? Scorch can try and wipe out A-wing number four here. Has to get four results to have a chance. Fingers crossed. Oh, that looks like four. Yeah, spend the, spend the focus. Do it. You could there see it. his knuckles going white there as he uh, he saw that, that decision he had to make. B, uh, aggressive. B, B, uh, aggressive. B, uh, aggressive. And boom. It's a dead. It's dead. That'll be it for A-wing number four. She's dead, Jim. Oh, sorry, it's wrong franchise, but uh, there will know. be no Star Trek quotes on this X-wing podcast. So as okay. you as you pointed out, uh, number three has its arc pointed backwards, which means it cannot shoot forwards. So that's reduced him down to ha just having the uh, Jess is out of range. So he's got two A-wing shots to survive. Yeah, with no dice. Now number two is the scary one. Uh, number five not getting more than one. Heroic triggering once. Hero. I mean, Indicated that's crit. should we should we keep a heroic tally in the corner? Sure. Heroic has triggered once so far. I've got the tally going on my sheet here. Well, it's gone from zero to one. It is once, yeah. Uh, there's Scorch taken two and going kablamo, shablams. Kablooey. Just space us now, folks. Got the rear arc shot from number three. It is range three. That's all right. Kylo can solo the list. And yeah, no damage. Victor, have I mentioned lately that I love you? <laughs> They and had a the great opportunity to cast the system open, folks. There's some videos from our PTL season up on their uh, their channel. There's some videos from the mm -hmm. system open as well. There's plenty of 1.0 videos if you're into that sort of thing. We're working on creating a, a bank of 2.0 videos. and uh, Well, it's interesting to go back into the archives, actually, and, and just kind of look at what X-Wing has become. Like, you know, in the funny... Either we've done a couple of videos recently where I joke about... Um, that line from The Force Awakens with phantoms being like, oh, look look what's happened to you. Something far worse has happened to you. Um, you know, there's a couple of videos from phantoms in 1.0 uh, in videos that they've done, which are which are really fun uh, to see what kind of challenges the, the game developers had in terms of, uh, you know, overcoming some of the, the, the design space roadblocks that they ran into nearing the end of 1.0 and how they've kind of overcome some of those challenges well, so far. Right, right around when we switched from 1.0 to 2.0, I went through and I made a list of probably, or Aaron and I went through and made a list of probably 10 or 14, I forget. Mm, just chasing um, Kylo like hard 1. here. Like 1.0 lists that look like 2.0 games. Mm. Um, and so this is, you, you can find that somewhere. I forget where I made the, I should make a playlist and then. Victor can put a little playlist together through them. Thank you for snapping a few photos. We'll end up up on our website. I know that yeah. the... Uh, I always the, like making a little community post. Well, the but, curators uh, of Snakes and Lattes here were asking to take a few photos as well because they want to get yeah. some of their... Did, uh, I, don't, I haven't seen them come by. Well, here's one of them now, actually. Jay was saying he wanted to get some photos for your guy's website. You can let him know it's a good chance if he wants to. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So, I mean, this is uh, not the direction I expected uh, Aaron to go no, in. I thought he was going to tell in the other way as well. Yeah. But you know what? This is ideal. He, he could finish Jess here. It's not. Jess impossible. has five hulls, so I really don't think that's going to happen. Well, I mean, he could crit, 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 right? Jess has more hull than he's throwing attack dice, so. I don't know. You know, if he gets uh, hit and then crit, which is a fuel leak, and then fuel leaks into direct hit, so and if then you magically can, he suffers another damage. Can you bring up uh, Kylo Ren there, Victor? <laughs> so you can see him pattern analyzing to uh, focus, and certainly um, the silencer struggles from not having linked actions when using the. Uh, Power analyzer. Well, he could use the chassis ability, but then he'd be double stressed. It's not really ideal. Turns out being double yeah. stressed the X wing is bad. Uh, it is. Yeah. So <laughs> it looks like he's shooting at Jess. Uh, three dice. Spend the force. Use the force, Aaron. Do it. Use the force. Do it. There we go. Take that ridiculous thing off. Kablamo. Shablam. going through here. That's a hit crit. Looks like. Range three from Jess. Just uh, one. Just one. Not bad. No reroll. You know, Aaron plinking his way back into, nope. into the, the game. Lock. Spending the lock. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Kelvin he opting the lock? to change his mind. No, Fly casual not. and not spend the lock. Ooh. Well, I'm sure Aaron's okay with that. Uh, and I'm, I'm speechless. That's that doesn't happen often. I don't I don't know what to do. <laughs> what what <laughs> what just happened? All right. Well, um, I guess he's got to go straight into a debris. 
Um, so that's an interesting development. <laughs> yeah, definitely an interesting development. Kylo Ren proccing his pilot ability there as well after defending and assigning the I'll show you the dark side uh, condition card to Jess Pava. And the crit that Aaron has selected is uh, the panicked pilot crit. So the that's next crit damage that Jess Pava suffers um, will, will be, be panicked pilot. Panic and that will go under shields, which apparently yep. she still has. I'm not sure if we can get a confirmation on. Just got the damage count, count double checked. Yeah, because we're still seeing uh, nothing, no damage up there. So, but that okay. should be interesting to find out. Sorry, right, we probably missed something. No big deal. And producer, oh, it was producer error that she'd lost the two shields to begin with. I see. So, so she wasn't actually damaged to begin with. Yeah, that's awkward. That's that sucks. <laughs> Just Pava and the A wings continuing their onslaught here. Unfortunately, both A wings two and three are blocked by Just Pava, who does move second. Um, not really going to be able to to get all of his ships through. I don't the, think um, that two and three are blocked. You can do a, a little hard two here. You can do a little hard two here. You can do a four forward, five forward here, and then um, Jess can get in here onto this. Like he has to go straight and fix his crit, his loose stabilizer. So well, certainly, I'm I'm not too concerned. Yeah, it's uh, it's a um. It's a tough spot to be for the grandfather, grandson of Darth Vader here. Yeah, Kylo's not... Uh, I mean, I have faith uh, in Kylo. Uh, Kelvin's only two losses of the season uh, were to myself. I went over the Nim game that he, he, he was not pleased with. And then he had another loss against none other than Sumi Vats, one of the yeah. other uh, content uh, casters from BWTV Live folks, who uh, defeated Kelvin 158 to 119 in a match where well, we Kelvin have the flew Cavill, Zuckus, Sunny Bounder, and two quad jumpers. We had the two hard twos there clearing, and we got the little Jeez, boost, the boost in here fit from three. Word. Yeah, and uh, number five there clearing. I imagine we'll see another little boost from him. Boosty, boosty. Jess is going to end up in here maybe. I think Jess might actually just one forward and bump, keep the target locked, and get her re-rolls for defense. Yeah, maybe. What do we... Nope, she's going in for the block. Oh, we get the, the autofocus. The camera's got a mind of its own. Oh, interesting. A little 4K action. Kelvin banking on the notion that uh, Aaron's going to ignore his crit. And, and Producer and Victor, if we could get uh, Jess up on the board, just to note that her charge is active. It recharges once per round. One per round. And so she will have... An A-wing at range one, and be able to shoot it, Seren. So Kelvin takes one. Oh, sorry, Kylo Ren takes one damage, triggering his loose stabilizer crit, which which, uh, which flips also it. repairs it. Yeah. Uh, a whoa. Two hull remaining on Kylo. This boost could dodge three arcs. Uh, he has to at this point. Like taking one damage to dodge three arcs is a pretty good choice. I don't think that's you, well, yeah. I mean, it was either take the one damage or take four shots. Or three shots, sorry. Woof. Oh, Kyle barrel roll. Barrel roll. It gets out of the range one from Jess. Out of the arc of two. Possibly at a range of five. I don't know if it gets out of three, though. Kylo Ren clearly has engaged his cloaking device. Okay, so we've got maybe... Sorry, I, I, uh, I stole producer Victor's. We've got definitely a shot here, right? Could be. Uh, I think three might be out at this point. Uh, we'll have to see if what they decide. Yeah, it's just the one shot from five they're they're um, acknowledging. And we've got one off the board here. Do Two we hits know? from range three. Oh, that stinks. Gonna need four, four five trials. dice here. Yeah. Mathematically almost impossible to not get at least one result. So we're going to see plenty of blanks here for Aaron uh, if uh, past experience Will serves. Aaron break the laws of math again? Damn well close. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's having a great day. Um, I imagine we're going to be spending the force here. Five dice to one of eight in focus. And it looks like he has spent uh, a force token and will be uh, taking no damage there. But uh, Aaron, considering transferring the... I'll show you the dark side condition to that A-wing. As we know, in 2.0, Kylo's... A Ability has been modified to when after defending instead of uh, when after taking damage. And mm -hmm. the crit card is assigned to the condition card. So you can 
change which ship has the condition associated to it um, based on who shot at you last. It is a may. You don't have to, but um, Kylo can choose who he wants to uh, to do his crit against. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. It's certainly uh, this has certainly been a fun match, as frustrating as uh, uh, some of the initial engagement might have been for uh, for Aaron losing quick draw very quickly like that is. Uh, uh, never a good time. You see uh, Kelvin's A-wings sort of starting to spread out into a conga line. He, I think he really counted on catching and killing Kylo this round. And it'll be interesting to see how he plans out the next turn to uh, to catch him again. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be easy for him to get. I was just, what, I just I, what I'm anticipating is that Kelvin's going to turn his two A-wings this way to rotate rear arcs. So that in turns to come, he can get them through here and, and cut Kylo off at the pass. You know what I forgot about? What's that? All the A-Wings have rear arcs, and that he will just be able to shoot whatever he wants. Time on target, man. So like if they, so if we have a two bank from two and a two hard from five, we'll have, mm -hmm. we'll have a nice big arc like that. And he'll be able to catch Kylo wherever he goes. Just plink through some more of that one little damage. Oh, these, interesting. These A-Wing the lists that Kelvin's... Are flying uh, have a tremendously high skill ceiling. I mean, what I really think we have to try and put in perspective here is that Kelvin's not a lax player. He's not just like, oh, move, rotate arc. Oh, move, rotate arc. Oh, no problem. Interesting. He didn't boost there with number two. He target locked instead. Yeah, he's going to take his locks here. And there's the rotate arc we were expecting. He's got one hour and two minutes left in this game. He's got all the yeah. time in the world. Take his, la take his locks. Clears the stress. Focus gets the focus. Rotate. Gets the stress. Uh, Jess rolling nice and slow. One forward to victory. That's the rebel way. It is the rebel way. Clearing True that story. stress. Focusing. All right, Kylo. Ooh. Now, pattern analyzer to boost perhaps here. Interesting move. Won't be able to dodge both of those arcs. Possibly one of them. He's going to be able to pattern analyze for a boost here, but will he take the second stress token and double stress himself to get out of arcs is the question. Or does he actually just boost and try and nuke three and take the shot from two? Three only has one health left. He could target lock boost. Well, now that's two stress. Yeah, he's just taking the single boost. He's going to rely on the force. Coming in. He's yeah. got to take ships off the board in order to get back into the game. Uh, getting three off the board gets him up to 70 points, gets him, uh, you know, halfway into that MOV. And, uh, I mean, he needs those He needs those points. He's not in a rush to get points. He's in a rush to get rid of some of these guns. He's got to get less arcs on the board. He's got to create places for Kylo to hide at that high initiative. So that got. looks like range one. So let's see uh, how he does here. That's pretty much what, pretty much what, what you want to see. Uh, spend spending both force he tokens. He has to. He has to try and get rid of that ship. And, and if it, he hadn't, it would have lived. Yeah. No, it wouldn't have lived. One would have still gone through. I can do math. Um, I mean, spending both is is annoying uh, or frustrating, um, especially when Kelvin. Um, well, yeah, I spent the target lock for the reroll. Kylo gonna have to roll hot here or not. two. That's that's two. Looks like two crits to me. Um, certainly wishing crits he, going through. So one crit, and then he will regenerate hate, yeah. and we'll have producer Victor and Travis will have the uh, the damage it's a card ops failure on that crit there. It's just not what you want to see. Yeah. Now we don't think we pull dials or not, but uh, the five forward on the silencer is not blue. If I, I believe it is blue. It is blue. All right. Well, then he might just get out of there. Um, well, you know, at the end of the day. Aaron's gotten rid of one more gun, so he's got some places to hide. The 5 forward is blue. The so only maneuvers that are not blue on the silencer's dial are the fast uh, three bank and turn maneuvers and the one turn, so everything else is blue. It's a beautiful dial. It's very reminiscent of the uh, RZ-2 A-wings. The only mm -hmm. difference is the RZs have those three banks that are blue. They can shoot backwards. They can shoot backwards. It's true. It's true. The silencers are beefier. They have uh, more guns, and they have... Uh, more life and more shields. Uh, sorry, more uh, hull, I should say. But they do only fire in one direction. Now, it's, shooting it's backwards is is a huge boon to your dial. Right? Like you don't have to do... You can do slower, more conservative actions, just swinging your arcs around, 
playing with those angles and just as you as we've been talking about time on target keeping those shots up keeping the pressure on the aces um, has been very good this game and certainly uh, I'm just going to throw it out there if we had to watch Aaron run his Kylo around the board for 58 minutes on and, one ends, up, and ends up taking out all those hay wings I would sit through every minute of it so the my question is um, you know who, who's your next target Jess Jess yeah Okay. Neither of the other two A-Wings are damaged, um, a a which means Kelvin needs to actually try and use one of them as a blocker or uh, to... Yeah. So Jess going to pull the K-turn here. Going to be too far for that re-roll, but still has a target lock, I think, from a couple of turns ago. Yep. Yep. The target lock's still there. Aaron did go with the bank. Good move. Interesting. It's a good move. I don't think anybody's going to have... If Jess has range, I'll be very surprised. Now, we did get all our templates modified. They got that little little line that Aaron's using so that you you know when you bump. All of our PTL templates. All yeah, you're the right. PTL templates. As you'll see, Kylo sexy, Ren has re-engaged his cloaking templates. device. Uh, yeah, the, the Chad Kylo's off in the corner there. <laughs> now, do we have a oh. shot? No, we've got a shot on Jess. Range three on Jess from Kylo. Now, I imagine Jess is going to take a range three shot and blow Two up Kylo with a weapons this round. failure. Here we go. Two dice with a weapons failure. Should Kelvin. have full force at this point. Um, don't spend the force. No, don't spend. Spending the lock. Spending the lock. Fair enough. And looks like one. Keeping the force. Just one. And oh, he takes Jess it. Just too far for a reroll. Yeah. Well, the I mean, you didn't check, so. Um, no heroic on Ms. Pava. Nope. I think that's the first time Kelvin's rolled blanks that he hasn't been able to heroic in some time. Uh, Spending a lock. There's the reroll uh, from the lock gone. And spends the force. Stays alive. Regents the force. Nothing from that RZ there. Okay. So an advantageous turn for Kylo. I don't know if it was advantageous because he bumped and didn't kill anything, but... It didn't go poorly for him, which is all you can ask for in a situation like this. Well, Aaron's the kind of player who's nothing like me. He doesn't tilt when he gets this part in the game, and he's, he even becomes a little bit more conservative. Are, are we talking about the same Aaron? We're talking about the same Aaron, yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying he's going to get angry and start flipping tables, but he'll certainly start, you know, rocking out and running his hands through his hair. And Look, if he didn't know, there's, flip there's the table after fl playing D Yun at the system open, he'll never flip a table. That's fair. And, and the, the game you're referencing, he rolls 18 dice without rolling paint. right? He has one focus result in 18 green dice. And I know it's it's a, a bit of a joke to yell my dice, and it's a bit of a joke to talk about dice variants. And But sometimes this is a dice game. And, I have been begging that's... Aaron to go off of space on his dice for, for weeks. But you know what? It's just... A baseball bat. We need to... The the guy's got a real nice iPad. No phone, but real nice iPad. We need to pitch in, get him the 15 bucks or 5 bucks or whatever it costs for the Dice app. The Dice app. He's just, got like, he's a 10, just, <laughs> like a 15 inch screen yeah. iPad with the Dice app on yeah, I think it. that that's a solid, solid, <laughs> uh, completely reasonable response to <laughs> rolling 18 <laughs> blanks in a row. Does FFG even make an iPad version of the Dice app? Well, it, they make a phone version and you just like blow it up to whatever <laughs> size the iPad takes, right? <laughs> Max Lols. Do it. Why not? Well, folks, I'm really excited to see how Aaron pulls this one out. I'm I'm still I'm still rooting for him. Well, we've gone through their seasons. Both of them have had a great run. Um, let's talk about some of the premier uh, experiences that both our players have had. So I have personally traveled to a few system open uh, related events in Coruscant with Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Aaron is a very regular player at almost all of the regional level events that have gone on uh, across uh, Canada and Ontario. Also one of the original members of the famous PTL um, trip to Fredericton, mm -hmm. New Brunswick, Absolutely. which was back in 2017. Now, he didn't make the... That was 2015, my friend. No, it was 2017. 2017? Yeah, I started playing oh, it. was two years ago. Oh, you're right. I got was the, it 2016? I got the... God, are we getting that old? Yeah, yeah buddy. it's 2016. Okay. I started playing in Feb 2016. That's crazy. Yeah. So, he didn't drive with us. We did a 17-hour drive. He met us there. It's true. He bust. He was already out there. Yeah. Family or something. Those East Coasters and their family. Well, he's from the East Coast, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. St. Andrews on the sea. St. Andrews. 
I don't know why I said it. It's that not way. on the sea. I don't know why. I said well, because there's a St. Andrews in Scotland. It's much nicer. Yeah, exactly. I can say that St. Andrews, folks, because I got family in St. Andrews and I've been there. Well, it's funny too because these two players playing each other is kind of a, a clash of the two mentalities that the PTL really uh, prides ourselves on sporting, which is our incredibly approachable, um, you know, uh, approachable environment for new players. Which Elvin, or sorry, um, Aaron is really well known for, uh, just mm. in terms of you know being somebody Absolutely. who welcomes new players, helps them learn. Um, he'll call out you know uh, um, an effect or a card that you might be missing um, to help you learn how to play better. And then you know you've got Kelvin, who's also a, a you know a, a courteous player, but at the same time, Kelvin's that aspect of our league that really offers the competitive edge training and practice. Mm -hmm. um, that we also pride ourselves on because, you know, we've got players that, that like to compete at, at, at high levels. And we've also got players who just like to rock up on a, on a league night, have a, have a few brews and play some beer wing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, wrapping that back up to, uh, snakes and lattes for the beer wing. Yeah. If you're just tuning into the video now, folks, or you skipped ahead at the beginning, um, as a reminder, we're really happy tonight. Spoilers. To this is how it ends. <laughs> As a reminder, we're really excited tonight to be casting la uh, from uh, the Snakes and Lattes location at Midtown, right uh, steps across the street from the Eglinton subway station on the Young Line uh, in the heart of downtown Toronto. Live. We're not live. but anyway. Delayed. Delayed, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, we're excited to announce the PTL is going to be starting up a league night at Snakes and Lattes on Wednesdays. So, so for looks more like information, Aaron head over to our uh, Facebook page. Fixes weapons failure, barrel rolled out. Hopefully getting to range two from just Pava. Going to get that. Reducing the shots on him. Uh, Kelvin r practicing rolling Spending off charge, screen. Rerolling with Jess. Netting two results. Oh, gross. And two results there for, for Kylo. Staying alive. Kylo, mm. Kylo going to mm. use Jess's mm. lightsaber to cut mm. herself in half. Staying alive. Staying alive. Mm. Uh, uh, mm. Uh, mm. Uh, uh. Staying alive. All right, Kylo. I have faith in Kylo. Do you have faith in Kylo? I have zero faith in Kylo. Oh, that's a shame. Maybe because I just don't See, like one it. of us has to be on Aaron's side, and when the other one has to be on Kylo's side. Oh, I'm on side. Aaron's side. I'm not on Kylo's side. That's oh. the difference. See, he's the only character who's compelling from the new trilogy. Devin, how many Kylos have I chased around boards for 30 minutes plus? Not enough. The answer is more than five. <laughs> I've played more than five games in my life where a one health Kylo runs around a board for however many times. The difference is that Aaron actually engages with his ship, whereas he one did. Kylo so, just runs away. So, but this is 2.0, and we're not seeing that sort of play. And and certainly Aaron could have done the five forward, fixed it, barreled, not taken that shot. Um, he's, he could sacrifice a, several turns of positioning to come back around. Um, but I think that that would leave him in a much more frustrating spot where he's stuck over in this corner uh, waiting to die. Um, well, avoiding if Kylo shots. is going to die, it's appropriate that it's on the planet where his grandfather built his own little base, right? There's Vader's house right there. I can see it. No, let me, let me, let me, let me, I'm going to build it for you. There you go. There's, just, there's the Vader's castle. Be careful not to become, well, what does he say? Be careful not to choke on your aspirations. Great. <laughs> Where they got the what was what was the actor's name who did the voice for Vader again? Oh, James uh, Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. That's the one. I would fail. I, mean, I would fail Bruno's lore master. This quiz. is this is this is this is our our favorite uh, movie planet where there's an hour long lightsaber battle with zero tension because you know how it's going to end. Uh, there was one some tension. I don't I don't know about you. There was some tension. No, like, there was, was there was some spectacular choreography there. Plus, Obi Wan had the high ground. So. Wonderful choreography is does not suspense make. Like uh, uh, someone's gonna end up with no legs, and someone's gonna end up in a desert in Tatooine. So it could have been two minutes long. <laughs> and both of them forgot about Padme. Like where where was where was the chivalry? Like Padme's just passed out in the truck. Yeah, you want to know why uh, why she died? You choked her out and left her on a lava planet. <laughs> Asphyxiation, man. <laughs> okay, so A Wing Two going in for the. Try and catch the two bank block here. Uh, if Kylo two turn, I think he's okay. If he didn't two turn, he's in trouble. I'm wondering if we saw a one turn here uh, from Aaron, where he keeps the stress. He's got lots of force, and uh, I mean a one turn would be lovely. There's a chance he might even skip 
didn't do it. I can't tell what the new dials are. I refuse to use the new dials. I just can't keep them straight. No, nope, um, too straight. Now, that's not what you want to see from Dave Grohl. Generally, you don't want to see the back of his head. You want to see him up on stage. Actually, I was corrected very aptly by Uncle Mark from the OCX podcast that Aaron actually is far more of a likeness of Getty Lee than Aaron, uh, Dave Grohl. And upon reflection, I have to say, Uncle Mark, well played. Well, either way, uh, that maneuver is not great for Kylo. He's sitting in uh, one, two, maybe three arcs. So um, we'll have to see uh, with, with no return fire. Uh, so we'll have to see what uh, what Aaron decides to do here. I think you evade boost here. Uh, that gets you. Can he? I don't know if there's enough space for him to barrel roll. There might be. There might be. Because he can barrel roll backwards and then pray that the the little zhuzhing of the force is gonna save him from five's attack. It would be great if Kylo could barrel roll upboard towards number two. Target but I don't think lock. He can. Taking a target lock for another turn. Jess may not have arc. If Jess, Jess doesn't, doesn't have arc. arc now. Like we're at a weird angle, so. That one's I mean, got maybe no arc. maybe Papa Poppenhausen. Just a range two shot from. Just that one shot from. Also, does not Poppen. have arc. No, I yeah. The A wing number five does have range at range two. No, uh, if uh, if I were to you, I would have said they were twisting the. Uh, Spend a force, recharge the force. Twisting the ruler. So the question now poses to Mr. Lau. Can mm. he block Kylo Ren and finish Kylo with Jess? This is his chance. I don't know if he can go slow enough to block the hard one, because that's what I think is coming. I don't know. I think you two-turn this one, rotate backwards. You three-turn this one, boost him there. And then Kylo, I think two -turn Kylo boost somewhere is somewhere out there. Jess is here. This one's got the rear arc shot. Trying to call these two is extremely difficult. It's like trying to predict the weather. This particular type of matchup, this is like Neo and Morpheus duking it out in the, in the Matrix. And not to say that one's better than the other. What I mean is that you, the person that you're playing knows you. He knows when you're squirrely. He knows what you're like when you're you're trying to get in their head. He's trying to get in your head. Do I do something anticipated? Do I do something unexpected? Like, where do I go? Kelvin going for the block, doing the rotate. Doing the rotate. I would be a very happy man if Kylo Ren uh, 4K'd in this turn. He's got Talon rolls too. Well, if he does the 4K and then barrel rolls up board with Pattern Analyzer, 2 is facing backwards. So it's yeah a good day. Yeah. Just going for the kill shot. Just now, this is also an excellent game for those, uh, say, critics of... Our, our esteemed colleague, Kelvin Lau, who would say that, uh, you know, he believes in the deep bids and moving last and and uh, all that sort of ace play. Yeah, but this kind of list really goes volumes to speak as his versatility mm -hmm. as a player, right? Because he's got no bid and he's got no, like, real... Just straight ace efficiency, moving, last, right? moving first. It's the A-Wings, man. I mean, he's 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 played them lots of times. He's really good with the them. The A-Wings are beautiful. You did not have the 4K oh, there. So gut-wrenching. Kylo's not going to keep arc there. Kylo's boost will get him out of Jess's arc, so he's only worrying about the shot so from A-Wing 5. boost focus or boost evade, and he's... But it will get him into 2's... Uh, no, you're, you're because 2's pointing backwards, right? See, this is a little bit of an example of why two-hour finals um, are different so much than 75-minute yeah. matches because Kelvin can actually be really cautious here, right? He's spent two or three turns now where Kylo's not shooting at him in exchange for really advantageous uh, herding mm -hmm. positions. Kylo's now up against the board edge, having to push linked actions with his chassis ability, and so if he boosted, he could chassis ability barrel roll for a stress and be out of that arc, yeah, and there it, it comes. I don't think it fits. I think it does. Will it fit? i got to get that silencer model off of that there. It blended. It did blend. My word. Just lovely. 
Mm. Lovely jubbly. If only he could drop a bomb or shoot backwards or, I mean. Why do you love Kylo so much? He can man? run. I love Aaron. I want out. <laughs> I, I do want to see Aaron do well. Mm -hmm. And like I said, um, I have had bad experiences chasing a Kylo around the board in a Look, late I'm, game. Look, I'm, I'm always going to root for the underdog here on, uh, on PTL. And, you know, the PTL's, you know, not really the underdog locally, but, uh, you know, uh, whenever I have the opportunity to cheer for one, I will. So, uh, I'm with you, man. Comes from the English heritage. We all, everyone loves an underdog. <laughs> you know, if you're German or French, you support winners. The Brits, well, you support pluck. The really, the French support winners. Uh, yeah, like the Quebec French or the France French. The real French. The, oh, I'm not going to answer that. No way. I'm not going to. I'm going to let Bruno. Bruno and his friends drag you off by yourself Listen, on that one. Uh, I had a great time at the Toronto System Open with uh, all the Quebec players. The Quebecois. Yeah, les Quebecois, les, les, les gens Quebecois. Notre ami de la belle Provence. Uh, mais oui, and uh, de la belle Provence. So I was uh, talking to Francois, who's a vagabond from uh, from Quebec City, and I was enamored with his target lock tokens. And at the end of the tournament, he comes over and he gives me all oh, those beautiful blue frog those, squadron. The, the, the frog squadron. <gasps> you tokens. freaked out because you thought I lost one of those. No, one. no, <laughs> Francois freaked out. I knew where it was. Uh, it just didn't. Uh, yeah, it wasn't me though. It was someone else. Someone else was freaking out about it. Or. Expressing concern. Sure. Um, uh, well, the amount of squads that rocked up with, with merch and swag to give away swag, trade, Absolutely. all that fun stuff. We did a really fun uh, craft beer swap. Mm. Um, anybody who rocked up uh, of, le of legal drinking age, of course. Yeah, of course. We, um, we, you know, you brought a local brew from your, your area and swapped mm. it. I brought some Toronto craft beer and swapped it with all this Toronto stuff. So, yeah, it was, it was, a, lot, it was a really good turnout. Yeah. And some, made some new friends, made some oh. new relationships. So hopefully it will last longer. So, well, yeah. And Steve gave me the go-ahead. Uh, we had a bunch of uh, swag left over, um, certainly from uh, – they, they come with more participation prizes than needed in case people – you know, there's a sudden surge and 50 people walk in the door. Sure. So at my discretion, I was able to send – uh, system open swag out to we sent some damage decks and cards out to New Brunswick and Newfoundland and out to Quebec City and we sent some to Winnipeg and I didn't send any to BC because those guys a, they, they got they got a winner instead they got a winner <coughs> listen and they can go down to they, they have a system open it's just like just south of the border oh that's a bump we are calling that one a bump anyway five bumping in the back of Kylo there not gonna get an action Means Jess is probably going to bump too. No, nah, Jess is nope, fine. No, she's fine. Okay. No, uh, Cascade Games was great. They sent some merch up before the system opened as well to kind of promote it. They were just as excited to be up here and uh, be a part of a Canadian system open as as we were. And you know, it ended up being a little bit PTL themed, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I think that it was it was great to see as many Canadian squadrons from all over as we had. We had representation from what was it six provinces. Um, we had British Columbia, Alberta, Manitoba, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, Quebec, New Brunswick. That's six so far. Do we get anybody from Saskatchewan or the rest of the Maritimes? Nobody plays X-Wing in Saskatchewan. Nobody does anything in Saskatchewan. Not wrong. It was minus 50 there a couple of weeks ago. It was actually like a few instances this winter. I actually checked it out online. It was colder in Saskatchewan than it was on the surface of Mars. We technically, <laughs> he lives in Ontario now, but we had someone from Ecolowit. Oh, but he really? lives in Ontario now. Cool. Uh, so I don't know if that counts. To uh, any of our viewers chiming in from overseas. Ica or Saskatchewan. Callowit is actually um, up in the Northwest Territories. So those are those. It's uh, not in the Northwest Territories. Sorry, it's, it's up in Nunavut. Sorry, it's the it's the islands at the top of Canada that where it's like one person per 10,000 kilometers live. Yeah, yeah there's 50,000 people in an area the size of like Texas or something. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, Kylo Ren doing a not a bad place for him. No, he's not. He's getting out of arc of Jess. Getting I'm out of range. Pretty sure one. that's going to dodge five's arc as well. We're just going to be looking at a shot from two. Can't afford to bank on hate here. Um, so the question is whether he pushes. I don't think he's going to. I think he's going to use this opportunity to try and get turned around. But if Aaron doesn't find a way to get turned around, well, my concern is he's got to kill Jess in forty minutes, and he's got to kill one of these boys in forty minutes. 
yeah, I mean, killing Jess would be great. He can kill Jess and a half health another one. Killing Jess gets him. Let's do some basic math. Killing Jess gets him to 126. 126. Right? Getting half on one of those other guys is 19. So we're going to do, I'm going to do some bad math here and say that getting him half on one of those boys doesn't, doesn't get him. He's got to get half on both the A-wings. That's that's the correct symbol there, right? So, certainly, um, Kylo surviving the range two shot from A wing two. He's got to kill two of these ships in order to uh, to get into a, a, a win. Well, the difficulty for state. Aaron will be finding an opportunity to engage the formation because Kelvin has realized that if he wants to maintain the lead in this long long late game that he's got set up here that he has to keep them in formation. He has to make sure that Kylo understands that Kylo has to be shooting at one of them in exchange for getting shots back from all three of them. Um, the real difficulty from Aaron is going to be finding an opportunity to, to shoot at him with a defensive token as well beyond his force. Absolutely. And we just having those... I don't know. Kelvin's been absolutely fantastic at keeping his ships together keeping them on Kylo's heels, keeping Kylo blocked and having to reposition and just Aaron's having to take so many of his thought and and um, just effort and, and time in the game on thinking about how not to get shot and spending his mental resources and his like physical resources of like tokens and repositioning mm. on not getting shot that he's unable to or been unable to come back around and get to that wing condition of annihilating those two ships. Mm. So the other thing that's interesting though is that Kelvin has kind of lost the ability to block Kylo at this point. Kylo's been pretty good at trying to uh, get out in front of the formation so his boosts aren't being able to get out in front of Kylo anymore. Um, A-Wing 2 considering a boost considering the straight boost or the bank boost here can take the bank boost I'm trying to decide how squirrely blocks Kyler's the hard one be. okay a wing five bringing up the rear probably going to boost to the make room for that hard three from jess here mm. uh no oh yeah there it comes oh my goodness you know, uh, a talon roll or a hard maneuver here from Kylo might be great. Hell, a 5 forward, just get out of dodge. Try and start to, like, reset the board state. Because we've got a, a nice big arc here. Yeah, jar just parking that arc in the back is great. Both our players, uh, taking. I'm just taking advantage of the table mic here for a second. Both just our players talking forward. about they feel a bit deadlocked at this point. Sure? Um, one of them has to take risks more than the other. I feel like both of them are taking small risks. Aaron's definitely taking a few small risks mm -hmm. where he's chosen to stress himself or not. Here's another example. He's probably not going to stress himself. And probably not. Take the range three. No, I, I think he did just take a target lock on whom. I don't see it down there. But... Uh, I think that might be Jess's target lock. Yeah, he's fine. And uh, on Kylo evades cleanly. Now, just because Kylo's that far out in front of these A wings does not mean they don't have the capacity to close that gap really quick. They are incredibly fast. And I think you might see a spicy little talon roll. Well, the interestingly enough is that Aaron's put himself in a position where that talon roll with the pattern analyzer boost further over here. There are, you know, if the A-Wings go through this channel here, like that, and Kylo does end up in this spot up here, he's going to have arc to choose his target. More importantly, he's going to have an opportunity to maybe bug out this way afterwards or, you know, continue the, the chase in a different direction. I really love the position that Aaron's chosen here mm -hmm. for uh, for this, what, what may end up being Kylo's last stand here. Yeah, I like it too. I think this is a... Uh it gives him a lot of options to engage next turn. Sure. Um, he could hard one and barrel roll or boost. He could Maybe talon we can ask pattern analyzer. producer Victor to help us clarify who the target lock token on Kylo is. Is it all three of Aaron's ship, or does Kylo have a target lock somewhere? Okay, so Kylo doesn't have a lock. He just... Uh, He's locked by all three of Kelvin's ships. Gross. Yeah. That's not great. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, Kelvin had the action opportunities to do so. Who needs heroic when you have tackle locks? Well, you need it, right? Because what you do is you roll I blank blank, and then you target lock the I into a blank, and then trigger heroic. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work like that. That's not how math works. <laughs> That's not how rerolls work. Too far now. Listen, Dream Crusher, okay? That's <laughs> what I'm here for. Nice, nice fast movements here from Kelvin. I'm just wondering uh, I if... I don't know if that one bank boost will clear. If uh, if he does Talon roll there, uh, that, uh, that would could, be a good position. That if, could if, be awkward. If because of how quickly Kelvin's gone, it might catch him out. Uh, if he's used to... Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, because those things have barrel roll now. They always had it. But remember, no, the one point oh yeah, we have barrel roll, and she gave him expert handling. Uh, Kylo Ren has pattern analyzer. Yes, so he could still dodge the arc. Yeah. No. no. Okay, so both the A wings opting to go through the chassis, not sp splitting them up. Um, a wing number five here, trying to keep a wide arc, to see where Kylo's going to end up. Question is, is that is this the turn that Aaron decided to turn and fight? Or is it the turn where he needs to continue to I pick mean, a better position? I mean, Aaron has to turn and fight. So I'm hoping for... Um, and there we have a, an I'll show you the dark side token. Ooh. Uh, Aaron going the wrong way there, <sighs> unfortunately. Taking uh, a three turn. Going to be able to do some actions here. Kylo Ren, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but is a, a fan of Pink Floyd. And, he uh, is, yes. And uh, The dark side so of the we moon. So have, we have the... Kylo Ren there holding uh, the the dark side of the moon from the Pink Floyd. Yeah, God, I love that album. And uh, for anybody who's too young to know what the dark side of the moon by Pink Floyd is, you're dead to me. Uh, I would download the album and have a good listen. Like, yeah. get yourself like in a Zen space, download the album, like chill out and just like groove for about an hour and a half. It sounds like a good time. Yeah, it is good times. Um, but I really would have preferred to have seen Aaron engage there with, with half an hour left and him needing to kill those two ships. Uh, a Talon roll here um, with, a, with a barrel roll might be uh, it would have a, given a him really an spicy way to get damage into Jess or to five or to start chipping away at you know his win condition. Right? His win condition isn't run and live. His win condition is kill some ships. Sure. I think that our point about what Kylo could have done with the barrel roll, he would have ended up somewhere up here. The question is, is if he was this close, would he then have no escape options? Or would the A-Wings just be on him uh, after that? I mean, well, he, would have I think Aaron, he would have been taking a range three obstructed shot on Jess with a re-roll. Aaron would need to do, again, what he did down here, which was somewhat successful of killing the ships that had shots on him and then blowing through the formation. Yeah, he's right. going to be really careful about what risks he takes with one hull, though. Yeah, and I imagine a, a one hard here would be sufficient. Uh, I forget if he's stressed or not, but I don't think so. I think we're going to see a pincer move from Kelvin here. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to see the pincer. There's going to be nowhere where Kylo goes this turn. Took Kelvin some time, but he definitely drew the map. I think one hard, Aaron evades uh, all the shots. Come on, come on, he put did it do right, hard. look at, look at that. It, it went, my little line went right along the line there. So we're going to see a little barrel roll this way. He's going to be out of everybody's arcs. Oh, look at that. Mm. Mm. Very well done. Mm. Mm, look at that little. Sometimes the weather is just right. I'm surprised he didn't take a target lock and barrel roll. I mean, he could have bugged uh, out. He may, not, he might not want to be stressed at this point. Um, certainly that's something to consider. He likes keeping his options open. Nevertheless, he is going to shoot the A-Wing. Okay, we're going to take the range one shot with four dice on A-Wing number two. Nevertheless, Kylo persisted. Well, here we go. I mean, that's what that's what he wants to see. That's also what he wants to see. Well, Aaron's persistence has on paid two. off to the tune of 19 points. You know, he's only got 30 minutes to get another, another 60. Ah, it's 22 minutes. Our clock is bad. Our table judge, Jackie, calling out 22 minutes left. Thank you, Jackie, for keeping the clock. As a reminder, folks, the stream table clock works at a little bit of a different pace. You'll see from some of the editing. So we it's always a keep a lazy table clock. Sure. We always have a table judge on hand with the actual real clock, and we align our, uh, our stream clock to match. I completely forgot about that. 
There's something interesting we discovered recently that the clock was wrong. It's not that the clock is wrong. No, the clock is designed for a stream table, so it works at a different pace. Yeah. That's not how time works. It is, yeah. No, it's not how seconds and time work. It's like it's like uh, Wall Street with long term. What are they called? Dividends and stuff. It's like it's a long. No, the play. second is literally longer. <laughs> yeah, it's like an American and a Canadian second. It's like thirty percent different. Uh, you're probably gonna edit this out, but uh, we we're, we have a finu. <laughs> so here's a, here's a perfect example of where RZ2s are magnificent. If they yeah. were RZ1s, this whole list would be in big trouble. Oh, there we go. The, the clock's the clock's close to the right time now. Okay. Kelvin oh, has the bumpy ability bump. here to just rotate rear arcs. Oh no! And get both his ships smash and grab guns on Kylo. This is of course assuming that Kylo oh. continues the fight. Well, he has to, right? If he's got 20 minutes left uh, instead of 30, like even then, I would I would be like. He should have engaged here in my mind and tried to do that range one attack with a target lock. And this isn't the sloop. It's a complete disengage. Well, like, the, striker, or sorry, the silencers don't have sloops. Yeah, I know. Some, That's why I said it obviously wasn't a sloop because they don't have them. Some frustration on the face of Kelvin here. It seems like the long play from Aaron here, which is strategically completely sound, considering he's running around on one health, causing a little bit of trouble for these A-wings trying to close that net. Uh, I'm still flabbergasted that um, Kylo managed to um, call that uh, turn last turn and, and get his work done, as it were, with, uh, with the full range one shot on the A-wing there. I mean, Kylo, again, setting up to do that little, that little hard one and uh, getting shots... Hopefully next turn, uh, he could do something a little a little broader. Like a, th uh, there's no way that's a th three hard plus a boost. Um, but well, Kyle's uh, got to do a one turn here. Again, two is the wounded one here. You got to remember that he's he's on fire a little bit. Kylo had his way with his thrusters. It is at this point that I would like to remind our producer, uh, Victor, and possibly Travis, who will hear the video later, what a terrible idea it was to give Devin Monkhouse a teleprompter. I. Love my little teleprompter. I'm constantly stealing poor Victor's mouse, but it's a wonderful thing. What we're really happy to be able to do, folks, is to um, you know point to things. We're pretty good at painting words with a, painting pictures with our words. Um, we actually have some members of um, X-wing across the um, province of Ontario, believe it or not, who are visually impaired and still play X-wing. So they listen to some of our content as well. And, you know, for us to be able to, to keep them engaged is a, is a point of pride for us. So And the teleprompter helps them hear better, No, too. what I'm saying is, is that the training that we've had painting pictures with our words is, oh, well, is what they, they appreciate. So. Really? John does not listen to our videos. He told they... me the complete opposite. Well, he was probably just being nice to I you. i got to have a word with that uh, guy. He was just being nice to you, Tim. Probably, yeah. Okay, Kelvin taking the opportunity to regroup. Now, this is an interesting position for the A-Wing. It can... Uh, certainly um, not go off the board, but uh, you can see that Kelvin has not stressed. And there's the one hard. Kylo going to have to decide if he wants to boost and take a shot at Jess here. I mean, he's Jess he's got three rounds left. Jess does have a reroll. Yeah, he's going to do it. He's going to go for half health on Jess. Half health on Jess is 20... Six, that brings him up to not enough. No, but it's closer. Just going to get the table judge to check about the obstruction here. I think it's probably obstructed, but we will see what the judge has. Hmm, that's a tight one. Everybody clinch! Uh, Everybody clinch! Uh, now, one thing I like with the teleprompter is I can show everyone my math, and, and I can show just how bad I am. Yeah, uh, for the record, anybody watching the teleprompter, that's not how math works. <laughs> it is. Uh, 93 plus 26, you know. Kylo spending the lock. Oh, not landing that third result. Just going to roll the foo. Yep, cleanly evaded. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Just going to shoot back. One die rolling furiously across the floor. Uh, I don't think that uh, they better okay, find so it. Spending the target lock that Jess has for two. Now, can he also spend? 
Aaron needs two results on five dice. Uh, he got him. Got him. A-Wing 2 does have a rear arc shot. Two hits. And got him. two results. Aaron's dice. No shot They just needed some five. warming up. Yeah. So A-Wing 2 almost definitely not going to get a turn to shoot next turn because the one turn um, boost will not fit. The one turn barrel roll will not get arc on Kylo. So... You Jess essentially has to do a a uh, yeah, I think a, a slow blue. I think if Jess goes into block, an A wing five finishes the job here as well. And Kylo, Kylo's got to trap this guy against the board. Ideally, Kelvin wants to be shooting uh, two guns at Kylo. Mm -hmm. I think that the block one shot might be the better idea. Aaron probably wants to try and take a shot and kill A wing two. So we're gonna see a, a one hard he up or down board, right? And then he can boost from that situation. I mean, I don't want to seem o overly optimistic here, but Aaron has the opportunity to kill A-Wing 2, and then he has the opportunity to half-health Jess. That's a win. We're getting uh, we're getting down to it now. Still got to find a way to get some guns on A-Wing 1. Sorry, um, A-Wing 5, I should say, because he's got to kill one and half-health the other two, right, to win? We, talk we talked about that. Well, I was saying he'd have to uh, kill two. Okay, so A-Wing 2 going to focus rotate. He has to kill Jess and half health both A-Wings, or kill Jess and, and kill one A-Wing. Uh, I expected a boost. He's just going to rotate arc and, and focus. All right. Okay, A-Wing 3 coming well, in there. Kelvin in his wonderful salmon-colored hoodie. Is it salmon? looks more of a mauve. Perhaps a maroon to me. Listen, I'm colorblind. I'm not going to get stuck into a discussion with you. Sorry, as soon as you said salmon, I was like, no, I got I to gotta do this one. Those blue three banks from the A-Wings proving that they are formidable. We're going to have a boost rotate from A-Wing 5 here, trying to keep guns on Kylo. Well, because it doesn't matter if Kylo is blocked if he dies. Jess has spent her target lock. Going to have to decide what she wants to do here. Now, is that a five forward? Yeah. Four, four, four forward. Okay. Is it a 4K? No, it's a four straight. No. But we can... Just a lovely move from Aaron again. Boost target lock in and delete number two. Now, see, I was wondering, like, if he'd done Kyle's the five... Boost there to get the range one on A-Wing two. A-Wing yeah. two, of course, rotated his arc forwards. Um, yeah. I don't think that the rear arc shot would have had a shot anyway, nope. but... But it's future. Uh, it's not future proofing because he's going to be dead. But uh, well, the interesting thing here, Devin, is that if Aaron does not kill this A wing, this A wing can one turn and block Kylo, and then it's it's game over. Okay, so can Aaron rolling disappointing results there again, but takes take, the one. Takes the A wing one. lives. Not great. That's really disappointing. I guess they decided there was a range two uh, shot there. It was A wing five with a range two rear arc shot. Kylo's Sorry, fine. Hearing a, a wing five, yeah. I should say. A wing five shooting at Kylo. No damage. Okay, so again, to just what I was saying, um, A wing two has two options here. He can either move forward and keep his rear arc facing backwards for a shot, or one of the interesting squirrely things is he could one turn and then barrel roll right back to where he is there and try and <laughs> block Kylo's moves, and Jess does the Talon roll and goes for the kill shot. Maybe. Maybe. But again, remember, we're getting down on time. Yeah, we are getting close to the time. Aaron really needed to kill that A-Wing that turn. Yep. One more bloody result, he would have done it. One focus. Use the Force. Kylo. Son of Ren. Let the hate to flow. Lord Vader. Son of Ren. Isn't he the Knight of Ren? He's the, the Knight of the Ren. Knights of the Ren. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember. I'm so I'm like whenever I whenever I think of the throne room scene, all I can imagine is is Daisy Ridley just cutting fools to pieces with that lightsaber. I don't remember that from the movie at all, but that's eh. because you loved the Last Jedi. It was your favorite movie. Anyway, we're not going down this rabbit hole. It's got my favorite uh, <laughs> lightsaber battle. Which is that? Uh, Kylo Ren versus uh, Luke, Luke Skywalker. It's probably one of the best lightsaber battles in the entirety of uh, the prequels and the postquels. Yeah, I believe it. Eh? Yep. 
Okay, so I, just I, Pava doing It's the, the second time turn. today I've said post goals. Post And the first time some of them just went bonkers. They were like, <laughs> like, it's not the right word. And I'm like, congratulations. <laughs> I'm having fun. Are you having fun? I'm having a great time. So A-Wing 2 not um, doing the one turn to try and block the one turn from Kylo. Not getting to rotate art backwards, but um, Kylo did the two turn closer to the board edge. Does sneak through. But do you think the boost gets him arc on Jess? Yeah. No. I don't think the arc. No, I don't think that Kylo gets arc on Jess. What I think is now A wing five is out of range. I think the shot's obstructed, and I think that Jess probably has one reroll. Oof. Just two. Spends the force. Lives. Both are players exhausting efforts. Soon to come to a conclusion, Kelvin has had a Zen Master-like patience with his A-Wing formation here. Definitely, ha Aaron has now kind of, I feel, lost his opportunities to get guns on the targets here because, you know, A-Wing 2 can turn in, A-Wing 5 can turn in and get two, three guns back on Kylo per turn here. I don't think Jess is going to get a shot on Kylo this turn, but... Uh, we're just under 10 minutes left on the clock here. Kylo, um, unstressed, though, could get some very good shots next round if he goes unblocked by by two. I mean, Kylo could K-turn, boost back in, and just nuke A-Wing 2. Um, or Jess, yeah. Depending on where Jess ends up, it's true. I mean, Jess is stressed. She's got to clear that stress. Does she do a, a one-bank left and put herself completely out of the fight? Does she go mm -hmm. straight and just open herself up to getting shot against Kylo? Does Kylo do the three-bank boost? Pop go, after, a, go after the half. Pop a shot on five, get it to half. I don't know, man. Taking a shot on a ra on an A-wing at range two and assuming you're going to get two damage through, that's ambitious. You're not wrong. Well, before the match, I was having a well, conversation with might, Aaron about come in. where he feels the meta of the game is right now. And he thinks he said to me one thing that really stuck on the, with me. On the verge it, of wave three. On the verge of wave mm -hmm. three... Um, you know, obviously RZ A wings are, are prevalent in the meta, but they're not they're not unbeatable. And and more to that point, Kelvin's the first person to tell him that the list has a really high skill ceiling. Mm -hmm. Mainly Aaron's thought was that um, you have to have at least one or two ships in your list with three agility dice. Lists that have two and one agility uh, ships are just getting chewed to pieces with these high ship count um, lists in the meta right now. You know, you got veteran turret gunner double tapping. It's not a lot of dice that they double tap. But at the same time, it's more and more opportunities with time on target, right? You're chucking more dice. The, the odds will inevitably end up being in your favor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so A-Wing number two going to focus rear, take rear arc here. Um, now, if, if, if Aaron did like hard one, two, three in, right? I mean, that's a, that's a dead A-Wing. But with, yeah, with I, Jess probably sitting here, that might be a, a difficult decision to make going to be a really, really interesting turn to see what Aaron decided to do with his well, ship here. W like with five here, I do no. like the... I don't like that, but certainly... Yeah, he's going to pattern out. Oh, the it's turn. a K-turn. Okay, yeah. I do like a K-turn. Yeah, because he can barrel roll downboard and get he a can shot boost. on Jest. Boosty, boosty, boost. Yeah, he could boost. And then he's in a beautiful position because he's nobody in a, can block He's in a position turn. to delete two. Because as you pointed out, you're not going to... Uh, get, let's say, two damage through on an A-Wing. I don't think Jess gets arc on him there either. Uh, I hope not, but Ooh, that's that's a, gonna be it's a more fun game. I, should close. I suppose I should stay if she doesn't. Um, but he's hoping to delete uh, two here, uh, which do is going to be a tough sell. and try and stick one through, or do you sh take the half-health shot on Jess? Oh, he's taking, no, the he's, no. he's taking the shot on Jess. Direct hit into victory? Oh. Uh, no. Now, does he spend the force here? Uh, this is a, That's a, a tough call. It's a tough call for, do you go for the half health on Jess, or do you just keep it with one? Use the force, Aaron. Use the force. I mean, you, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? Is that uh, that's how the saying That goes? is the old expression. If you now, don't it use would it, be, you lose it. It would be an easier decision if that were a crit. Do you agree? Aaron's trying to do some math in his head right now. It's a tough call to make. You have no idea. Just shoot. Just shooting back but at you. But that that little hit back there. Right, he's spending oh. both of them. Yeah, ballsy, go Balls for to it. Balls the wall. Spends the focus, takes one. All that right, sucks. Jess well, Pava he at half it. health. No arc for Jess. Range two from A wing two. 
Advanced Optics for two. That's a dead That's Kylo. It. Kylo Ren going down to the A-Wing. Folks, exciting finish. Yeah. Well, we're here with uh, Season 12 champion Kelvin Lau. How have you done in the past? Have you ever won the PTL before? I've actually never won the PTL before. Yeah, um, that's what I thought. I didn't want to. I didn't want to commit. Yeah, I made a bunch of top 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 fours. Uh, Aaron and I played a game maybe two years back. It's a long time ago where mm. I was top two and he knocked me out of it. Ironically, I was flying five A wings at that time, mm. and he was flying aces again. He beat me that time. Um, but now, viewers at home should not feel too bad. For Aaron, his name is the only name that does grace the trophy twice at ta first place. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, he's a great player. As you guys saw part in the game, like, the initial jumps went badly for him, yes. But then he recovered, and he caught me a couple of times with Kylo. Just, like, nearly took back the game had he not take that la last risk. If he just rolled two evades at the last, at the last, that last turn, I mean, could have been a completely different game if you, mm -hmm. you uh, watch the video. Uh, but all in all, I thought it was a good game. Uh I think we called out each other pretty well. I called him out early in, in the game, and I got quick draw early, as you saw. And then he managed to take Kylo and uh, pulled the game back towards his favor near the end and then just failed on one dice roll. So it was a super, super close game. Aaron's a super good player. Um, mm -hmm. Usually the roles were reversed. I was flying, I'm usually flying aces. He flies yep. swarms. Yep. This, this, this proves that he's very versatile. He's good at what he does. He can fly aces. He can fly swarms. Doesn't matter. Absolutely. And and I know you usually rely on uh, like a deep bid and moving last and and that sort of play. You see online people criticize that kind of play. Yeah. And but I mean certainly I think this shows that you know if you're a good player you can make either work. Yeah. I mean honestly when you have perfect information it's easy to make decisions as long as you don't make the wrong decisions. Yeah. Um, so. For me here, it's just I, I was trying to play play a good early game. I got good early game, and then Aaron just made all the right decisions at the end. And he's, you know, as you, you can see, he can bring it back if he just got that little more better dice roll. As you moved over towards your side of the board there, right. you, you were able to keep your A-wings together. You were able to keep yep. Jess together through into the end gaming, and you kept almost bullying Kylo into uh, repositioning or taking uh, disadvantageous maneuvers. Honestly, so like I, I was patient for a little bit. As okay. you saw... On my bottom left corner, I was mm -hmm. chasing him. I was behind him. I thought I caught him a handful of times where it was like, there's no way he's getting out of this, right? There's no right. way. And it, in one of the turns, he actually dodged two arcs by hairline and then one more arc uh, pretty well. But but it was super close where I almost caught him with like two focused target lock shots. Yeah. Um, and he just managed to call it right. Like he looked at it and he'd be like, yeah, that's totally out. And I, I thought it was in. So, I mean, that's, that's the type of higher level play you get from people at the PTL. I mean, he was able to keep Kylo alive for almost an hour and a half by himself. Right, yeah. And he got some un unlucky rolls, too. I mean, I, I tagged him uh, like a random from a random shot with one crit, mm -hmm. thinking, oh, this is not going to do anything. I think Jess was shooting range three. He had a focus. I rolled one crit. I was like, should I spend the focus token? Oh, sorry, spend the target lock? Yeah. I was like, there's no way I can put damage through a range three and he has a focus token. Rolls four blanks. Yeah. And then I well, should probably the, spent was it. Was that the wounded pilot or, or the uh, That was the loose stabilizer we had to oh, do too hard out when I set up that kill box and he just mm -hmm. totally called me on it and just like took the damage. But that's no big deal. Kyle right. was at four, four hall and just like ran away. So, I mean, it's it's pretty insane. The the, the dice was on my side at the beginning, and then um, I think it was kind of evened out at the end. But it did. His yeah. his dice did come back into into some sort of normalcy. Yeah. Um, but certainly, you know, Kylo lives on like Kylo with hate and regenerating the force as he's taking damage was really great and allowed him on a couple of turns to spend two force, get two force. Oh yeah. You know, it, it was huge. Yeah. Takes one damage, regens one force, regens a force at the end of the round, moves on to the next round with two force. That was pretty powerful with Kylo. He was able to do that a couple of rounds in a row. Which, if you watch that, that's one Kylo with two force tokens. Yeah. You're going to have Jedis with three force tokens, two force tokens. There's going to be like eight force on the board on the Jedi side. They can somehow feel three of them. It's going to be insane. Like, I'm worried for the Jedi and see how they're going to do. And uh, it's, it's going to be a meta warping sort of uh, sort of release same thing as we had in wave eight when the mm -hmm. jump masters came out sure. so hopefully the play testers did the correct thing and they fixed fixed the uh, jedi so they're no longer like super broken because if you they think about broken. it these are sorry they look broken is what you're i saying. mean yeah if you, if you think about it you ask an aces player like me what is your what is your ideal wish list for an aces i want an aces that can double position mm -hmm. high initiative and then be unbumpable like i'll still get a focus token my bump you right. check all those boxes and if they come on, they come in under half your list, like like Kylo sort of does. Mm -hmm. Then like that's a win. So the Jedi is actually going to be super super interesting to see how they uh, how they pan out. Got a trial coming up uh, on March twenty third. Do you have any idea what you'll be flying there? It's uh, sort of just afterwards. You know if you'll be. Good night, Aaron.
I have I have like three lists I'm thinking about. Like if the Jedi comes up beforehand, maybe it's just Jedi because like those those guys are bonkers. Depends how it shakes out. If it's mm -hmm. like super cost effective, then definitely Jedi's. The list, the two lists I'm thinking between, well, three lists I guess is my mm -hmm. Poe and three A wings. Right. Um, that list is just super efficient. Like you got a high, you got high initiative, you got low initiative, you got fast A wings. Nothing going to go wrong there. Um, the other list is my uh, the list I played against Evan earlier with two the blue squadrons with intimidation. And then uh, Bastion with MNG8, Lulo, and Tally. Okay. Like that's, again, a list that has both high and lows. And then with Bastion, you have a, like, a solid brick there that can deal a ton of damage. Uh, and then also, I was thinking about maybe going back to maybe going back to Scum, fly some Fen, Terok, Han Solo, maybe. You think Fen and Terok have, with, with uh, that big base, do you think that's got legs in a, in a potentially uh, a Jedi meta? You know, they're in a bad place with, with RZ2s flying around, but if you can cut a deep enough bid, Fen can actually just, like, just munch those Jedis, even though they have Force Tokens. Like, 5 on 2 dice is not really great odds, so, like, yeah. Fen is a perfectly viable uh, ship to fly. Terok, he's just, he's just there to strip tokens if he but needs to. But he's stripping the tokens, forcing yeah. the Jedi to spend that force. Right. You know, if the Jedi are only ever on, if, they've, if you force that overspend on the initial engagement, and they're only ever, if they only ever have one force, then uh, that sounds like it might be... You know, yeah. a way to sort of like, if you bully them around, force them to overspend, then they'll be constantly force starved. Yeah, and Hansel is always a wild card too. Like, he can either do really well, throw, roll four dice all game, or roll two dice and feel like like a crappy A-wing. You right. know, that's kind of priced at a big ship. So, I don't know. That's a potential list. Um, I, just, I just have to get closer to date, see what comes out. I mean, we saw the preview today on, on the... On the uh, FFG stream, Ahsoka looks like a promising piece. Mm -hmm. uh, those arcs looks like they'd be pretty good. I'm not so sure about those torrents, but yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, interesting trials for sure. Honestly, I'm not sure what role they exactly fill. It depends how much it costs. Is it cheaper than Tie Fighter? And yeah, okay, maybe they're a bargain. Fair enough. But if they're they have more haul to agility, so I don't know how exactly they're well, how exactly they're gonna do. Yeah. Um, some of the ability looks interesting. Uh, I think his name. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, Dedicate, dedicate might be okay if you want to like play them a team oriented type of build, but it's really hard to say about about what they're gonna do. They're gonna do uh, in terms of adding to the faction when you can really just fly through aces, right? Mm -hmm. All right, Kelvin, congratulations again. Thank congratulations you. on your your first win here. Yeah, so, thank you. Long deserved. It's been and, a uh, run. Finally, I yeah. finally uh, I'm finding the bride, not the bridesmaid. Yeah, as, uh, as you old got it. goes. And yeah, yeah. great, great to be here. Top. All right, all right, thanks, man.